feels so good. <laughs> Do you love how it feels right now, Steven? Mm-hmm. It does. It sounds really bad. But I know, yeah. I'm sorry. But it's not. It's it's a good feeling. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but Sutter doesn't have that good feeling right now because he's still sitting in the director's chair. Is that right, Sutter? Yeah, but this was better than your stools. So yes, definitely. That's, that is true. All right, here we go. Jared Poland Frono's photo.com and welcome to Raw Talk episode number 82 and I'm calling this wait for it cuz you guys don't even know what the hell I'm calling it right now. Oh damn. Ken Rockwell is a, is uh, dangerous to photography. Uh-oh. And you're going to find out why. I've had enough of reading that crap poisoning the world of photograph beginner photographers with miss what I in my opinion is misinformation. We're going to talk about that coming up. But before we do that, I have my new chair. You do. You like the color? It's blue. It's like a, what is that, like a baby blue? It's like ocean blue, ocean bro. Blue. I don't know what they call it, but I got my chair. You got your new chair last week, mm-hmm. your Herman Miller Mira 2, Ooh. and I have the Herman Miller Embody, which like hugs your back, and it, it, it's their most expensive chair that they make, but the point behind it was we got to put our butts in something that we, we work all day sitting at our, our, at our tables. Yeah whatever wherever we work (laughs) photographers work 99 percent of the time not 99 a large majority maybe 90 percent of the time is spent at the computer doing work definitely these days yeah you want to have a quality chair i reached out to them i got the herman miller and body and m body and i love the freaking thing you sat in it what'd you think of this one compared to that one i think that one's comfier like it just it like hugs your body a little mm. more than this one, but this one I feel like has a little more lumbar support. Maybe just because it's pushed forward a little bit this week. But the back, yeah, yeah. You can you can change it. I have that by a screw back here. Yeah, mine's I think, like as tight as it can be. Oh oh oh, there. Oh, is yours getting? <laughs> yeah, it just got tighter. <laughs> I wish everything had that screw on it. But yeah, this this works well. Oh oh, that's so much better because I'm sitting further up. Exactly. I actually have my legs sort of crossed under here. Yeah. Because I I just find that to be comfortable for me. Um, but anyway, that's really the chair talk. This is a Herman Miller. Just go to Herman Miller's site just to see what chairs can really look like. We spend so much time sitting in our chairs that you might as well get a good quality piece of chair. Like I say, get good quality glass and yeah. quality other things. If you're going to be sitting in it for 15 years, actually, some fro readers are like, I've had one for eight or nine years and it's still as good as when I bought it. Wow. Just, you know, what quality products mm-hmm. are like. Anyway, this this chair would be... Uh, be uh take you 14 years at a hundred dollars a year to pay it off it's not terrible i it, mean it's not it's terrible a quality chair that'll definitely last that long i'm sure exactly uh, all right so that's enough chair talk we got that out of the way how did you think the d600 d610s did last week uh i think they looked good except i mean i was shooting on my angle before with a 5d uh 51 2 lens yeah you know so it was much sharper. I could tell that this was a little softer, but we're shooting with a 51.4 lens, it, yeah. which is Nikon's kind of lower end 50. Well, no. The, it's only 50. No, yeah. technically that was their higher end, but it's been replaced by a 51.4. They also now have a 58.14. Yeah. It's just older. I never replaced it. This is the ED version, mm-hmm. which was considered really good, not very expensive. We could try out the new Sigma, which is 950 bucks. Everybody's really fawning all over yeah. that new 50 Sigma. Or I, I asked Nikon if they'll send us a 5814. That'd be nice. Or we'll try to get some Cine lenses. But the only Cine lenses that Rokinon had are like 85s or wider. Mm-hmm. They got 85 or then the options are 35 millimeter and that's not good for what we're doing. Yeah. And I mean, it could just be an issue where, I mean, I was shooting with probably six gram worth of gear before sure. now where we are went down to maybe like three or so. Which well, what I said is that thing didn't, well, it's less than, it's much less than three. Well, we, yeah, I'm saying that everything together, the D610. It's much less than three. Really? Oh, that yeah. lens is only a couple hundred bucks. Oh, a I new, didn't know that. The new 50 is only 460 bucks, I oh, believe. Oh, and then the 512 Canon was like 1400 1600 like is it? I don't know. Whatever I paid for it. It's around it that price. It was your birthday gift. Yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Remember, Stephen? <laughs> I do. It was your birthday gift. And, and bonus. I still thank you for that. And, and Christmas. And everything. And your new chair. But I know it's not the D610s because everything else looked exactly the same. Just my angle looked well, a little softer. When I was focusing it last week, I sat there and I was like, it doesn't look as like it's uh, really getting there. You did say it a couple times. But it looked better this week. So uh, Yeah, maybe just misfocused. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But it's weird because the I shoot raw, I feel like that shirt, the logo looked sharp. So I don't think it was that. Which is know. weird because we'll I focused on out. the face. Uh, uh, maybe it's just time to replace that 50. Yeah. Maybe it is. Um, Blood Moon, we're going to talk about during photo news. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that there. I went and saw the Vivian Mayer, Meyer, sorry, Vivian Meyer documentary. Oh, yeah. How was it? It was good. 
it was good. You know, it was. I went with this girl I went to college with. We haven't seen each other for a bunch of years, and she's into documentaries. And she didn't like the fact that Maloof, the guy who found the stuff, was the director of photography and everything for the video. She didn't like. I thought the video. I thought it was a very good documentary. Uh, you see some other work that you haven't seen before in the books, and it was cool. You get a lot of the story behind it, uh, and it was very interesting. Because you're listening to this guy talk about a person that he never met and never will meet, found her work, went and found people that she was a nanny for. You hear some of the darker side of who she was. You, you, you get that out of it. But you have to look at it from what he's saying. I'm curious how much money it's making because it's got to be a nice chunk of change yeah. if it's if he's selling prints he's selling her work he pretty much i guess technically has the copyright to everything he discovered it yeah. he bought it he owns it and he doesn't need her permission what about the family or how there, does that work there is no family yeah. i believe is there oh no. you see that the france why she had a french accent but how she france that's me <laughs> i say france i thought you said french no france 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 i like french dressing it's pretty good well the thing is people made fun of me i, I said pecans yeah. And then I ranted on, and this is in a rapid fire critique, that when people say crick, mm-hmm. you have a crick in your neck, not in your backyard. <laughs> okay. It's spelled C R E E K. That's cree creek. Yeah. I've always said creek. And hey, what do you put on your waffles? Syrup. Oh, you suck. I say syrup. Dude, it's syrup. I say syrup. It's I'm not sorry. syrup. Tomato, tomato. No, 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 <laughs> no. What do you. What do you say for a caramel? Do you say caramel or caramel? I say caramel. It's caramel. <laughs> See, now it's caramel. No, no. <laughs> I say it both ways. Caramel. I think I say caramel. 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 I'm but surprised being the Philly dude, you syrup. don't say caramel. It's syrup, not syrup. And is it dinner or is it supper? Dinner. It's uh, or dinner. is it a uh, hoagie or a sub? Well, it's a hoagie. <laughs> to us. To us, it's a hoagie. In to New, New York Yorkers, it's a sub. It's a sub. Uh, to Chicagoans. Sandwich. I don't I forget what the Chicagoans call it, but there's the hero. People call it a hero because really? a submarine, a hero. No, it's not a hero. It's a, it's a freaking hoagie. <laughs> a hoagie. Uh, back to Vivian Mayer. Yes. Um, so it, it's interesting. I'd love to know more of the details behind it because he talks about, Adam was telling me that he went and heard him speak. And, and it, I kind of got to, he came across kind of like a douchebag sometimes. In the documentary? In the documentary. Um whether he is, or, uh, that's just my, that was just what she observed Your next to me. Yeah. And that's what I got a little bit out of it. What are you writing down? Because there's nothing to bleep. Good. <laughs> Steven's job this week is to keep track of things uh, that we need to either add to the show or or not take out, but just make Stephen yeah, uh, like aware of when he's I editing. to auto-tune stuff, right. for example, or exactly. maybe bleep out a curse or whatever. But Vivian Mayer... It's a very interesting documentary. I was it, It's inspiring to see the work that was captured. She may have wanted people to see it, just never got around to it. Yeah. Uh, and so he discovers it. He becomes the curator of it. He decides to turn it into a business and, and turned it into a successful business, which I do not have a problem with whatsoever. The interesting thing is if somebody else found the work... It may never have seen the light of day because they may have done something different with it. So it took Maloof, this kid, to purchase them and find all of the things and then have the idea that there's something here. I need to do something about it. That's that's building a business. I have no problem with branding, marketing, and business. And from what it looks like is that a lot of people love the work and they're buying it. And they poo-pooed... like. The, the main photo industry and the art museums poo-pooed his ideas and poo-pooed him doing this, but the what? Poo-pooed. Poo-pooed. I've never heard someone that's use a, that that's term. A, that is a technical, <laughs> technical artsy term, term. In the Urban is, Dictionary. No, it's poo-pooed. <laughs> that's, what tech, that's what the artsy people, they poo-poo it. Uh, that's the first time I've heard that. Poo-poo. Hashtag. Poo-poo. P-O-O-P-O-O. And it's not called like crick. It's not paw-paw. It's poo-poo. <laughs> P O O. I feel like that's something like my two year old niece would say. Poo poo. <laughs> anyway, but no, that was a technical term, Stephen. Uh, they basically looked down on what he was doing. Yeah. They and by the way, my butt is nice and comfortable. Dude, it's so much nicer with these chairs. I gotta say, it just feels good. Yeah. In the butt. Usually at, by this point, only like fifteen minutes in, I'm already like, oh god, my back. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. 
they looked down upon it and he said, screw you, I'm going to do what I want. And he made it happen. So that part, I fully respect the business side mm-hmm. of it. Love it. I love business. I love marketing. I love branding. I love what he's done with it. He, he found these negatives and told the world they needed to see it. Well, and just the fact that she's now a known legend when it comes to that, you know, photography. We probably wouldn't even know about her, like you said, if it was in the wrong person's hands. Exactly. How much did he pay for It was the- like 300 bucks for the first <laughs> box. Wow. And then he found the other people who bought the other ones, and he bought them from them. Because they probably thought it was just nothing. It, but there was hundreds of rolls of undeveloped film. Yeah. He hired a company to go ahead and scan everything, and they're scanning like a 1,000 a week or something, and it just takes months and months. And he talks about selling. We have to sell prints in order to afford to do X, Y, and Z, which I think he played that up a little bit. Because sure. they sold a ton of books. They sold gallery showings. There's a guy that represents all of the work. They say they sell more of her stuff than they sell of the the, the more famous people. He's making bank. Yeah. I, I would I, love I'm, to know the business I, side. I, of I bet it. in the beginning that was an actual legit excuse as far as selling prints. But now, yeah, it's just it's a business, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that for the Vivian Meyer documentary. It was playing. It's playing up here until thursday yeah i gotta check it out it only till thursday i watched the trailer again when you asked me to go but uh there's a darker side there yeah. is a darker side of her um correction from last week we didn't have a correction but adamos with the new ninja mm-hmm. the star the small one which one was a it was a star right the ninja star is a smaller one uh oh man i think the one that took the c fast card yeah it only takes c fast yeah and there's two generations of those now they said so you have to get c fast for that it's not reverse compatible yeah because I, it doesn't have the pins. i did make a note on that in the video version oh, okay. um, i put a little annotation up just saying it doesn't take compact flash because right. after we found out sure yeah. and and you know what's interesting about atomos well i, I kind of have a challenge for you guys out there because i think they're running out of ninja things to use like what other names could you what what else could they call their next item? <laughs> it's like I, last week I was Nunchucks. like, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> yeah, the ninja numchuck. Uh, you got the numchuck. What do you guys think? Hashtag Adamo, you know, at Adamos and say ninja something. Come up with some whatever they could call it. The Bruce Lee, you know, the Ninja Lee, uh, <laughs> the Ninja Norris. Even though he wasn't a ninja, d- Chuck but Norris. He pretty much is. They should just call it the Chuck Norris. <laughs> the best one you can buy, the Chuck Norris. <laughs> I'm just coming up with, yeah, the Chuck Norris doesn't record 4K, 4K records on it. Or I don't know. <laughs> like well, you awesome punchlines they have. Whatever they do. Points. So what do you guys have for this? What What are some other things? Because I got Hayuken, maybe Smash TV, but that wasn't fair. Remember that video game? I don't. Smash TV? Well, maybe they could be like, I'm going video games with it, but maybe they could be like, uh, finish him. Yeah, Mortal Kombat or finish something. Finish him. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, so anyway, just put that up on Facebook. Tell us what you think Adamos should call their next future pro- or What other names are still left that were, are around ninjas? <laughs> All right, let's get to the, the photo news. Photo news. Uh, and then I'll get to the Ken Rickwell. The Rickwell. Uh, Pentax, they announced their new medium format camera, the 645Z or 645Z. Uh, as far as specs go, it has a 51.4 megapixel medium format sensor, uh, max ISO of 206,800. CMOS sensor, you have to add. CMOS sensor, correct. Because there's a difference. There is. And 1080p video shoots, uh, it does three frames per second continuous shooting with 10 frame rate raw buffer. Uh, 27 autofocus points with 25 of them being cross type uh, weather sealed tiltable 3.2 inch LCD screen dual SDXC slots which support the UHS one standard surprise they went that way and not like a CFast or something uh, or even compact flash I just thought they would have gone with XQD yeah <laughs> <laughs> or your favorite card uh, it's out this June for uh, 8500 which is a very affordable price it's price to sell and yeah. they released 13 lenses at the same time yeah 13 lenses 13 to go with 13 lenses yeah somebody was asking uh, and they're affordable too, really affordable. Eighty five hundred bucks for a, a system that's medium format. If it gives you that look, Adam and I were talking about this. And there is totally a look. And it's always about the look. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between a thirty five millimeter picture and a medium format, and you have to look at it different. Like a seventy millimeter lens is totally different on a medium format camera. It's, it's almost like a wide angle at that mm-hmm. point because of the size of the sensor. Yeah. So you have to take that into consideration and. Uh, the zoom lenses are there's not a lot of two eights there's a lot of four fives and five sixes i would love to try one of these things in a concert yeah that would be awesome yeah and adam has a hassie doesn't he He has a hassie does he love it i think he has a phase one yeah 
He sold something and got something else well, a while I'm sure back. Sure, he loves it regardless. Yeah, he likes it. Uh, next up, we have Google. They uh, they patented contact lenses that have tiny microscopic cameras on them. Uh, the patent describes a display built into the lens that could work in with the camera to expand a peripheral ver- vision, highlight objects in front of you, or allow you to zoom in on things farther away. Uh, they're saying that the camera contact lens could offer feedback to like a blind person as well noting where they are walking so they don't bump into things it could also notify like a blind person uh, apparently of like a nearby friend with face uh, recognition which is crazy so who knows if this will actually come to fruition we'll see if it actually happens but it's pretty cool concept in a world where you can i just wanted to see if steven would start writing (laughs) (laughs) i told go in a world Where you can get contact lenses with cameras that zoom in, that do everything you need to tell you where the supermarket is, to tell you when there's friend or foe, this is for you. Brought to you by Google. Contact lenses with cameras. Soon to be shooting other stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Back to the show. (laughs) I was waiting for you to be done. Anyway, I, I told Sutter just specifically if there's like a movie voice that I have to add to, to make a note of that. Uh, so that is what he's been doing the whole time. Uh, Sony revealed sample footage of the A7S's crazy low light capability. Uh, the video goes from ISO 1600 all the way up to 409,600, just like the D4S. Uh, and it's remarkable at how clean it gets at that kind of ISO. I mean, it's not for really professional to be using at that point, but it's still something nice to have in the camera. Um, Moving forward, we have Nikon released another video from the Behind the Scenes series. It takes us back to Joe McNally, which I think he did the first one, uh, where he showcases very basic lighting techniques. I mean, these are like the bare minimum of like off-camera, fla- off-camera flash kind of stuff, like TTL metering. Um, and that's about it for that part. Is it blinking, Stephen? Yeah. You want to double check? Because you didn't look very hipster happy with it. He's resetting the cameras. It's blinking. All right, because I got to have trust issues. Sutter, when you reset mine, can you grab me a water too out of that? Because I forgot to grab one. I left a water right there on the counter, so you can give him that one. Just kidding. I'll take that one. Um, uh, so, yeah, the Joe McNally thing is he's doing a lot of basic stuff. Very, very basic. Thank you. Very I haven't basic. watched it yet, but check it out. Nikon actually made note to me, they sent me a message, the PR people, that they noticed that a lot of the traffic for video views has come from you guys at home. So thank you for checking them out. If you like them, obviously that's a good thing. Our job with Photo News is to bring you stuff that we think you may like. Yeah. So if it's very simple and basic, you may like it. But if you think it's over the top simple, then it is what it is. I think it is almost over the top simple to the point where I'm not sure if a video is necessary, but I'm sure there's certain people that need to, that can get something to watch from it. it. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, we have photographer AZ as Edwards almost got hit by a motorcycle while photographing a race. Uh, the bike skipped across the, the actual gravel trap and flipped up into the air right in the spot that he was originally shooting from. Uh, he was unharmed, but he lost most of his gear that day. The gear that was still there got destroyed. In which- a day where a motorcycle comes flying at your head and all that it takes off are your lenses, but your body stays the same. That's why you shoot with cannon. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. He pretty much destroyed all the lenses, but the bodies that were there were still good. He said it's, ac- it's actually as if like nothing happened. He had a Canon. It was well, like <laughs> as if nothing happened. Canon 1D, 2N body and a wait, what, 1D what? Mark. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. Wait, at that wait, too. like a 1D Mark 2N? Yeah, maybe it was that one. That's an old, 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 old. I know, Body. but he was shooting with that. Mm, okay. 1D Mark II N is, I guess, the proper way to say it, and a 1D Mark III. Um, he had a 400 f5.6 lens and a 24 to oh, 105 that's what the lens was? f4 as well. Yeah, but I mean, that's Good still riddance. a pretty pricey lens. Good written. So they pretty much were snapped in half. Uh, now in he says, a world where your lenses can be snapped in half, Chuck Norris doesn't get his lenses snapped in half. Chuck Norris puts it back together. In fact, Chuck Norris actually built it. Now again, uh, the Chuck bodies Chuck Norris were grinds still his own good. glass. Oh my God. Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris doesn't buy lenses. He grinds his own glass. You done? Yeah. So let's just hope this guy's insurance because uh, he definitely lost some money that day. Would lens tag save his lenses? No. <laughs> Do you think that the rider that crashed or whatever uh, his is responsible? For it? That's a good question. Riders on the storm. Riders on the storm. 
Until the day I was born, I don't know the words riders on a storm. No, I don't think that they, uh, the rider is the uh, is at fault. I think you either signed a contract. I was going to say, I'm sure they have to sign something. Some kind of waiver they're... that says you are putting yourself at risk here. Yeah, it's but very dangerous. there is a lawyer that would take that up and try to sue somebody. Yeah. Probably. Well, let's hope he gets something from it. We have, uh, this is, we're going to bring up the Blood Moon. Uh, NASA released a time lapse of the Blood Moon eclipse that happened last week. Which was horrible, by the for way. For us. N- the, 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 for photographers looking, I was like, this is going to be awesome. This is NASA Observatory doing a time lapse of the Blood Moon. And it was balls. Oh, you're talking about, I thought you were talking about the Blood Moon itself, not the time lapse video. The time lapse no. video was pretty jerky and not Horrible. Great. Yeah. Oh, but, but so what Stephen was thinking I was saying is, we talked, and I set up my camera and tripod. I set up the tripod up on the roof. That was the picture I took on Instagram, and it was clear, and the moon was there. I set that up around midnight, brought the camera inside, left the tripod outside, set my alarm for one thirty-seven. You sent me a text at the same time yep. that my alarm went off, and you're like, it's cloudy out. And I went upstairs, I took a look, grabbed my tripod, went back in, and went back to bed because I couldn't see. It was just pure clouds. And at first, around midnight, it was actually pretty clear. It the was skies clear. were great. And there was a full moon and everything, and we could see it. But yeah, then around 1.30, it actually started raining where I was. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, it was raining here, yeah. too. So we didn't get to even see it. We didn't get to see or it. Or shoot it or anything like that, no. which is a bummer. What else do you have on it? Is that what you had on it? Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, they just released a time-lapse video, and nothing special to it, to well, be honest. No, their, their video was horrible. Yeah. I, there's much better stuff out there. But one thing I saw on it going around Instagram real quick was the 30 best Instagram photos from the Blood Moon. I did see that too, yeah. What a, what a joke. You, For, what a joke. You mean... What a joke. People shooting it with, on Instagram? What a what joke. <laughs> yes. So what I wanted to do when I went up on the roof, I had the D800 set to take photos because it's 36 megapixels, and yes, cropping would have been needed. Um, I had the D4S on at 2.7 time crop mode with a 302.8 to let me get close to the, sc- the, the moon. What I wanted to do was take a still image with a pro body and then take an Instagram photo and say, tell me that the gear doesn't matter. Yeah. In this situation, tell me that the gear doesn't matter. You know, because I took a beating on on Facebook a little while ago for saying for for adding to that. I was I'm I'm kind of tired of hearing people talk about, well, you know, it's it's the photo, it's the photographer not the gear. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Education is extremely important and I agree with it that a photographer with an education in photography, not and I'm ta- not talking about a formal education, but I say understanding exposure, understanding angles, understanding lighting has a better opportunity with whatever camera you put in their hands to get quality work than somebody who has no clue about what they're doing. Yeah. So to me, what needs to be added to the end of that statement is that it needs to be clarified. I Yes, you can get quality results with anything. In the right hands, you can get quality results with anything. And in certain situations, the right tool for the job is needed no matter what you say. Because the blood moon, I mean, I don't know how half of these made it. They're out. Of course, they're blurry (laughs) and out of and cropped. And so don't tell me that the right tool isn't needed for the job. It's very true. So that was that slight rant that people misconstrued and take as me being an elitist asshole, which is not true. So did you reset that camera? My camera? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know why I just didn't even see you go over there. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> so that whole elitist thing. I so Adamo Sutter, huh? Adamo Sutter. You see, you didn't see me go over there. I'm a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that one. Did you see what? Oh, <laughs> by the way, we can see what he's wearing. Uh, I was going to say, did you see what he showed up in? <laughs> Marty, Marty, we got to go back to 1985. <laughs> 1985 called Marty. They want the vest back. Well, it, what are you afraid of? We're on the third floor. You're not. A, you're not in a boat that's sinking. <laughs> It's a nice Penfield vest. Oh, uh, Penfield <laughs> in a vest from Penfield. Wait, let me write this down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what is Penfield? It's like a really nice like, Urban Outfitters. I've never once been inside of an <laughs> Urban Outfitters, but in an Urban life. Outfitters has been inside of you. Uh, I don't know how that. I, I don't, don't know what that meant. Either. I don't think that makes sense. So anyway, back to the Blood Moon. Unfortunately, we didn't get to shoot it. Yeah. We were blurred. We were blocked out. But that I just wanted to say when I saw that, my idea was to do a crappy Instagram photo or the best Instagram photo that I could do. And compare it to the D800. And go, okay, you tell me which one do you want. Yeah. So having the right tool was 
you know, you couldn't do it with any camera. Well, and when you're shooting the moon, it just looks like a usually a blown out circle in your phone just because of the metering and all that stuff as well. Okay. Yep. We have Google put out a new Lytro-like free camera app, speaking of uh, mobile apps, uh, that lets you control depth of field. Mobile or mobile? <laughs> <laughs> I say mobile. I think the correct term is mobile. <laughs> it probably is, because that's kind of how it Aluminum looks like it's pronounced. Or aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> I love listening to the Brits say aluminium. Pollen or pollen? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's pollen. Um, so, yeah, they have a new Lytra-like free camera app. It lets you change the focus after the image was taken with the lens blur option. It's very simple name too it's just called google camera uh now it's only available to those running an android device with android 4.4 plus and up uh so here's what google has to say about it in quotes lens blur lets you change the point or level of focus after the photo is taken you can choose to make any object come into focus simply by tapping on it uh on it in the image by changing the depth of field slider you can sim simulate different aperture sizes to achieve bokeh effects ranging from subtle to surreal. Um, the new image is rendered instantly, allowing you to see your changes in real time. So it looks like they basically take a bunch of images simultaneously, which then go through this special alg algorithm that they have to determine the depth of field, which then can be changed later. Yeah, like so when, when, when I was in Chicago a couple weeks back, uh -huh. Chicago, as the guy said at the game, uh, Lytro was there trying to pick up stores to sell their product uh -huh. and i and i and they wouldn't give me an inside look at what the next lytro was for whatever reason they they weren't they didn't want to but i just was honest with the guy i'm like you're gonna get out lytro by another co company that's not even they're not even gonna use your technology and nobody's gonna care because hmm. nobody's gonna care that they don't have the light field sensor in their camera all they want to do is be able to change their focus if they want to because I gave Hing the Lytro to borrow. He still can't figure out what to shoot with it. Really? Well, I couldn't figure out what to shoot with yeah. it. There is no, in my opinion, there is <laughs> no use for that camera, especially the form factor it's in. So I'm just sitting there and the guy's telling me what they're, what they're going after and what they're looking to do and that they have the next camera. It's coming soon. Look, you can't put out a camera every four years at the, in this juncture and think you're going to make it. You know, the Lytro is terrible. Well, especially when no one really even picked up on it in the first place. Yeah, it was a mate. There was so much news about it. You could refocus. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Why didn't this technology advance quicker? And, and don't let me let me go back and say that they said just a matter of a couple years ago, it took something the size of a room or something to house the technology to do what they ended up putting into the first Lytro. So much technology. Which is cool. Which is cool, but they needed to get bought out by somebody. But like I said, you guys are going to get out light rode by somebody. Yeah. The only good thing about that day, there was this girl. Her name was Corey. Oh, was she a light show rep? She worked for Lytro. She works <laughs> for Lytro. Corey, are you watching? <laughs> I could say it now. She was so cute. She was smart and she sophisticated looking. No, but I, I sent Lytro an email today. I, mean, I, I should just call. She's Tell Corey I said she, hi. I did. I said that. I wanted to send them some free stuff. I want to send them like edible flowers. <laughs> I'm telling you, she had the coolest hair. It was like all like nice and blonde over her face. Like really cute looking, really nice. And she was smart. That's good. Always we took a, a walk and talked once yeah. about business. Once. We well, talked about business? That's well, that's weird. what she wants. She wanted to talk about the light show. I don't know if she wanted to talk about more. She's like your girl, man. Talk I know. about business. I saw her sitting at the bar before <laughs> just having a beer, but I didn't know she was with like the photography people. I would have said, so. I'm just, I have no, no, but speaking no of, oh, I have game, but it, I have to turn on a show and then I'm perceived wrong. Last night, uh, Todd Wolf, who I did the video guide with, is mm -hmm. taking, he didn't tell anybody this. Well, I'll tell everybody. He's <laughs> now take, everyone knows. He's taking an uh, improv class in the city. That's cool. And I was like, dude, why didn't you ask me? I would have signed up with you. So last night they had a show, which he was going to watch, which was an improv, two improv troops. And one was better than the other last night. But it's improv. You never know which way it's going to go. So yeah. we watched it. And he's like, after it, there's an improv jam where you sign up. And you put your skill level down. Like if you have zero experience, they'll put you with somebody who has experience and you just, you do it. So I did it. I did it. I how, did. How'd I, you do? I think it was pretty good. It ended up with a stripper and, her, and, and, and cutting Coke and not using a razor. So you just start from nothing? And no, they read a poem. That they, they read, in this oh, okay. case, they read a poem and there's trigger words in there that you would go with. Like if it's something like, 
and the street corner lady said, and you'd just be like, okay. And then they would start and she went a direction and she's like, you're just crazy. I'm like, that's because of the Coke. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the, the drug dealer. I'm on drugs. <laughs> you know, I sh- and then when I thought about it, you know, I should have been like, it's because of the Coke. I'm on drugs. You know, it should have been something like that. But it was the first time I've done it. And then after you're done, they're like, first time, first time, first time. <laughs> and then there was a girl with yoga pants. Like a scene from a movie. But no, they really do. They're all, everybody was so encouraging. You feel I, like a million bucks when you leave. You're like, yeah. No, no. I mean, it, it's really cool to know that that I didn't wuss out. That I was just like, screw it. I think I can do this. And I'm going to put my name in there. I've never done this before. And I'm going to try. You get up in front of about 60 people wow. in this little room. And, and there's a stage and the lights are on. But what's what I for anybody out there trying to speak in front of a group, the best thing you can ever do is have a whole lot of lights in your face. Yes. Because you don't see anything other than the lights. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you just imagine that nobody's there yeah. and you just talk. And I'm not saying you ignore. You make eye contact or maybe if you can't, if you can, you do make eye contact or you just look around. Your gaze changes and you make it seem like people are there. That's I guess there's some education in this story. Yeah. But I'm thinking of taking the class, taking the 101 class, and and just meet from for meeting people. And just nobody knew me, which was cool. So it's totally different. That's cool. Yeah. Did he get? Did uh, Todd? Todd get video did get up there of you? No, no, no video. Oh. This wasn't for share. This was for just for fun. Yeah, but that'd have been cool. And we took Uber there. Oh, did you? And back. And what'd you roll up in like a Mercedes? First one was an Escalade. Ooh. Yeah. That's- <laughs> Escalade was nice. Balling in Honestly, it was 25 bucks for the three point some miles, which a cab would have cost us probably 19 ish dollars with tip. Yes. So, extra couple bucks. Why not? Yeah. Uh, So, let's continue news. We got a few more stories. Uh, Actually, close to the end, but we'll get there. A pair of photographers got some really interesting car photographs after they light painted the car from beneath the ice on a frozen lake. Um, The tough part they said was getting a strong enough waterproof light source uh and they ended up going with a magic shine mj 810b light that oh did the yeah trick. yeah the magic shine i've never heard of that <laughs> have you? No, I, no, i've never heard of the magic sign h273-b but apparently just need to be this bright ass light and they finally got something to work um because they they were cutting through like uh three foot thick ice or something it was crazy where are they Manitoba? it was in russia or something oh do, leave it to the russians yeah leave it to the russians the russians are insane and now just going on that they had uh, issues drilling the ice since the hole was too narrow for their light source and they had to drill through uh yeah a meter of ice to get to the water but they eventually yet met up with some other people that were also cutting ice we all scuff locked randomly <laughs> <Yeah. the area. laughs> oh we do hey, we ruski we just come and cut ice we have nothing better to do we're gonna drive our car what kind of car was it? Uh, that's a good question. It was a sedan. I don't know what kind. You couldn't really see that close. It's a Peugeot. <laughs> they probably don't have Peugeots there. Uh, now, it's just it's funny that like apparently ice cutters are like a regular thing there. <laughs> so we come out with our ice cutter and we're like, hey, we got to cut three feet. You know? Oh, it's uh, nothing. What? Three feet of ice. Hey, we're rushing. <laughs> Hey, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, but it's really cool. Did you see these? Did I didn't you guys see it. See these? I didn't know about it. Really cool stuff. Uh, the ice lights up like all the spider That's webs cool. and cracks on the ice, and it just it's got this like blue, greenish blue tint to it. Oh, really I'll have cool to check stuff. it out on yeah. fronosphoto.com slash podcast. Uh, fronosphoto.com slash raw talk dash 82. <laughs> That's where all the music news is. Photo news. Uh, Annie Leibovitz <laughs> is releasing the art edition of her big book, which well, comes... she's not releasing it. Task can is. exactly. They're releasing her book. Uh, it's the art edition. It's five thousand dollars. They call it the sumo edition. I was reading it as the art edition, but they call it the part of a sumo series. Okay, well that uh, it's limited to a thousand copies, which I guess is why the price tag is so high. And it's also twenty by twenty inches or fifty-one by fifty-one centimeters. Uh, it comes with a fine art print signed by Annie herself. Uh, the full set of all four dust jackets comes with the art edition as well. A custom-made tripod stand uh, designed by Mark Newsom for the display. I mean, that's worth the price right there, Mark Newsom. <laughs> It'll be available this June uh, if you're willing to dis- dish out the cash. And there's also a normal version, which is limited to 9,000 copies. Same size, I believe. I don't know if it's the same size. Maybe that was an error. It might have been an error because when I checked earlier, it said the same size. But then when I went back... To the actual website, uh, I didn't see it on there listed. Right, so, so it's five thousand dollars. Yeah, double the price. It's five grand. There's only a thousand of them. The prints are twenty by twenty. So when you open the book, it's twenty inches by forty inches. 
That's a huge thing to do. That's why it's very expensive. They've done this in the past. They did one for uh, Hel- Helmut, New- Helmut Newton. Mm-hmm. His were five thousand dollars originally. Five thousand. I can't uh, imagine And then I think that. they sell for around twenty grand right now. For that, I just picked up that book for a hundred bucks, the yeah. smaller version. But it, I think the smaller version's done very well for a hundred bucks. And that's a big book. That's, that's a big. That's book. totally worth a hundred bucks. Uh huh. That book that you got. It was. Now you were actually like. Didn't you want to get this? You were debating it. <laughs> I, what, what are you going to do? I, I don't An know. An investment. I, do I want to make that's that investment? A big investment, man. We could get a lot of gear for that kind of quiche. Yeah, but uh, that's art. You know, you you invest in art. This is true. This is true. Uh, there's a new aerial photo series. You showed me this of unique images. Wait that- a second. The Little Mermaid. What? Oh, <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. Uh, no, not the Little Mermaid, not uh, Ariel or whatever her name was. Ariel. Ariel, is that how you... Ariel. Whatever. There's two ways of doing it. It's a very, you know, Yiddishka, Yiddishka name. But yeah, so there's a new Ariel photo series. Um, now, there, a pilot took all these, uh, apparently over a couple of years, and he put them all together in this big series. Very symmetrical images. Uh, for example, there's one with like various circular flower-like boat docks set up full of boats, and it just looks... Amazing. It doesn't even look like a boat dock. Top down images from what the pilot would see when he sticks his view, head yeah. out the window mm-hmm. and shoots straight down. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Total photographer's uh, eye, you can tell, creative eye that he's got. Oh, yeah. Um, there's an image. This is one of my favorites. I don't know if you saw this one. Image of a uh, a ton of like shipping containers that look like oh, a yeah. game of like Tetris. It was awesome. Set up. Yeah. The shadows and everything. It made almost it... looked like a tilt shift it... kind of lens, too. It was that he used. awesome. Yeah. Um, there's also like highways, farmland that he used, a lot of, a lot of, um, rule of third stuff going on, all that, all that kind of stuff, but very cool stuff. One of my favorites this week to talk about. And last we have Flickr did a video mini documentary on a photographer named, uh, Dinah DeNova who combines the old with the new via tintypes. Uh, she opens up about how she takes the tintype images, how it's a full process and production behind it versus like digital these days. Uh, it takes like an entire day just for one picture. Um, she loves when people can't tell if the images are old or new. And it's just a really fascinating look at, you know, what went into photography back in the day, how much it took to get these kind of images. Yeah, it's pretty cool what she created. Very cool stuff. And yeah, she goes really into detail about uh, all that stuff. But that's it for photo news. Sutter. That is, uh, it. I need you to grab this uh, big print and just hold it up, okay? please, and tilt it forward. That's a big print. Yeah, I got another, what, 24 by 36 print from Adorama Pix, a luminized print uh, of a... It was from the 200 to 400 mm-hmm. with the D4S. I wanted to see it. Like, I, I wanted to order it. Uh, and I still have the wrapper on it, so we're leaving it on. So just tilt it forward a little bit. There you go. That should, that should be fine. W- but anyway, this is a, a runner. He was running from second to third. I know this kid. I have actually umped him since he was a little kid, and he works at one of the restaurants not far from my dad's house, so I figured I would... I wanted to buy the print anyway just to see what it would look like, and I'll just leave it there the next time I go and give the kid a gift so he can take it to his parents or something so they can have it. It's just a real... It looks fantastic. The quality is up there, and and speaking of Adorama picks, they still have that code. It's PXJared25. All right, Sutter, you can remove it so you can go take your note. That in, this will be out before the end of... Uh, what are we in, April? So at the end of April is when that code will stop working, but it's PXJared25, the number 25, all one word together, to get 25% off an Illuminized print, Adorama Picks. Uh, I love that stuff. And Adam just made a video about Adorama Picks Lumina prints that he just got. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he made a cool video. That's up on photo.com as well. Um, he just He's like, I wanted to order these things, and he loved them. What did, do you know what he got a, a print of? A lot of cute stuff from Cuba. Cuba? Cuba. Very cool. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great image. That's an awesome gift, too. I mean, that's, it's not very, uh, that's not a cheap thing to get, you know? No. <laughs> if, if you just take the gross cost of it, yeah. you're looking at a $200 thing right off the bat. Did you Except, use your own code for it? Well, yeah. <laughs> I get discount. But so even when you do that, you're still saving 40 some bucks. $47, uh-huh. I believe, if you use that 25% off code. It's great. So that's well worth it. Yeah, that's just a great gift. For anyone. Yeah. I like giving the gift of photos of people. I like doing that stuff yeah. or giving them, leaving them things. The parents it's a great leave behind. The parents are going to love that. Oh, yeah. So now it's time for the rant. Ken Rockwell rant. I don't even know what you're like talking about. You don't know I what I'm talking about? No. I guess I didn't see what uh, what he put up. Um, uh, let's read what he said here. 
on his site. So he puts out a lot of these real world user guides. And I do. I go to the site to see what he has to say. And you know that he and I have emailed back and forth. That may be done now after what I said to him in the last email I sent to him because I asked him if he was serious about what he wrote and if he really believes that, what I'm about to read. Did he respond? He responded with something, paraphrasing, something about U.S. journalism law says that if you're going to post it, it has to be factual or true. So he believes in what he is spewing here. And I've had enough of reading this crap that I think is poisoning new photographers' minds Mm -hmm. because it's... I'm not saying that everything I say is the end all and be all by any stretch of the imagination, but what he is spewing and what I'm about to read is dangerous to a beginner photographer. It's just flat out dangerous, teaching them the wrong, in my opinion, the wrong direction. Flat out. I'm reading it right now and I've highlighted it. So this is part of his D3300 guide Mm -hmm. that he's telling people how to set it up. You know how I make a user's guide? Something similar, except he wrote it. And the first section here is image quality. And it says, I use basic JPEG right off the bat. I use basic JPEG, but he explains it. The default of JPEG normal wastes twice as much space in your computer, lets fewer photos fit on a memory card, and makes the data take twice as long to transfer for transfer or email. What world is he living in? Yeah, we don't have one gig cards anymore. Well, it gets worse. It gets worse. One gig but, hard drive. But seriously, let, let's... Let's fewer photos fit on a memory card makes the data take twice as long to transfer. It's not 1987. Okay. And, and, and okay. So let's keep going. Since the pictures look the same at basic, I use it. So more pictures fit on my card and more, in, and more importantly, I don't clog up my computer and everything transfers copies and sends twice as fast. I guess he just wrote the same thing twice. Fine is twice as big again as normal. Which, which is like what, like 500 kilobits or something? They're like. not very big <laughs> files to begin with. Yeah. So this is terrible, and it gets even worse. The D3300 can't make a bad image, image even at the lowest settings. So right there, he's just talking about that this camera won't take a bad picture. It's not the freaking camera taking the picture. It's the person behind it. The person behind it can take a terrible picture regardless of what camera they use. So to sit here and say that the D3300 can't take a bad picture. I could take a bad picture with... Steven, go grab my D3300 off the shelf. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to prove this. Any camera could technically take a bad picture. I'm going to take a bad picture yeah. with this freaking camera. It depends on... Yeah, it's the red one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually have to grab it. No, don't grab a lens. I'm just making a point. So thank you for going over there and placating <laughs> me. Um, I don't. That's just a terrible statement to say that any camera or the D3300 can't take a bad picture. Poison, poison, poison. <laughs> D3300 can't take a bad image even at its lowest settings. The normal fine and nef raw modes are for people who don't mind fitting only 12 images on a card. The pictures really do look the same. Try it and see it, it, see it if you're curious. I did, which is why I shoot JPEG basic. This is not fake. This is real. 12 pictures on a card? What are you using, an 8 megabyte card? I was going to say, the one that comes with the camera? It doesn't even come with one because they don't want to... They don't want to... nobody uses them? Well, they don't want to make you feel bad that they give you an 8, gigabyte car, eight megabyte card anymore. Yeah. Those files... Yes, they may be raw file compressed is probably 16 megs or something. Mm-hmm. 12 on a card? Yeah. What, what card is he using? 64 How, megabyte. 128 <laughs> megabytes? Yeah. 64 megabytes? How poisonous is this? I, I feel like I'm getting sick from this poison. But but am I wrong? <laughs> am I wrong in ranting on this and saying something? No, but I mean, he's also talking to photographers, so he's assuming that you're probably a photographer behind the camera, which is why I guess he's saying I'm talking about like the quality issue. Like this camera doesn't take a bad picture, and I don't know why he's talking about because he likes to fit selling twelve this. on that. Because well, that's 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 false. That doesn't make. Th- that you, if this you was 1990, like you said, you didn't or, justify. You didn't clarify the point that you could only get twelve pictures on a card because you didn't say subtext 
only on a 164 megabyte card. Yeah. So nobody can, people that read this are going to be like, oh my God, that I shouldn't be shooting in JPEG. I don't care if you shoot JPEG. I don't care if you shoot raw. I don't care if you shoot basic. I'm here to educate people. I think that education is the key to photography, one of the keys to photography. And doing this is setting people behind so far by telling them that they should be just shooting in basic JPEG. And that storage on your computer, it's going to email faster. Oh, don't talk about the better dynamic range when you shoot in RAW, that you're capturing all of the data that you have, that you could do so much more with the image when you're done. He goes on to talk about how he sets his picture control. I said it's a plus seven sharpening. He said plus seven sharpening for when he's doing something. What's the default, like three? The, the default is zero. I thought it was like plus three. Well, even if it, in, the, in these D610s, it was like two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven. It, it almost sounds like he, that at least that paragraph that you just read, is something like he just copied from an older review from like an old ass That's, Nikon It's possible camera. that he did do that, yeah. in our opinion. In our opinion. But I, I, I don't know. I, the reason I am talking about this is because I think that a, new, a lot of people find his work because he's built such an SEO empire of stuff that people find his stuff before they find Nikon's own website. It does come but up to, like first. To say something along these lines... Say something, I'm getting <laughs> over you. Um, to say something like this is just purely dangerous to a new photographer because they're going to shoot for a while and uh, not understand why their photos look like crap. To go along with shooting an auto ISO that he says, that he touts flat out, stay in auto ISO. Really? That's his other thing. And then there was another thing that he said. He goes, I use large 24 megapixel or medium 13 megapixel for landscape and small 6 megapixel for family photos. Why? <laughs> large is the largest is the default, but unless you want to print everything 20 feet, six meters, for those of you out there who care, wide, the small setting also lets you make prints of any size, 20 by 30 or 50 by 75 centimeters, easily easy, and saves even more room on your computer and memory cards. Now, don't talk about the quality of an image. This this technically you can make pictures that big mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're going to hold up to that this four this six what is it six megapixel image is going to have a hard time catching up especially if these people crop it they don't understand that yeah. they don't understand he doesn't talk they, they're going to crop it and see a terrible image and be like oh this looks like terrible I thought this camera couldn't take a terrible photo that rockwell guy's an asshole <laughs> hey ken you want to come on my show and it goes <laughs> and it goes um it goes on even further I'm serious. Even at the small setting, you've got six very sharp megapixels. Which don't talk about the lens at all. Don't talk about lenses. God forbid. Six. He thinks the eighteen to five fifty-five is the greatest. Because I'm ever. assuming he's talking about the kit lens, right? No, he said six very sharp megapixels, which is more than enough to print any size if your photo is in focus in the first place. I've sold photos to McDonald's with cameras with cameras set down to four megapixels, and McDonald's use those for billboards. He put that photo up of his two kids sitting there inside one of those McDonald bubble things, one of those playgrounds, mm -hmm. and it's a crappy photo. It's terrible. I don't give a crap. So what if you can blow it up to a billboard? If it's a billboard baggins, if it's <laughs> if it's a if it's a crappy photo to begin with, it's going to give you a crappy output, just like he said here. If it's out of focus, but his photos are crap. They're garbage, in my opinion. They're horrible. And this information is dangerous. It spews poison to these people. And this is why I'm taking time to tell this to everybody out there. But you know that if you're already watching this site. But I want this to rank up there, up there on Google. When people search for Ken Rockwell, I want them because we're separating this into a separate video. Oh, are we? You're making this into a separate rant. <laughs> okay, I Please. guess I am. I forgot to say that. Yeah, you did. So, yes, separate rant. I need to do an intro. Steven, remind us after this. I need to do an intro to the Ken Rockwell edition for people just watching this. This is terrible information. I can't believe he puts it out there in good faith, thinking that this is good stuff to teach a beginner photographer. Doesn't even go into any other explanations, just tells people to shoot in basic JPEG because it's good enough and take my word for it. Test it out. You'll see too. But don't tell people to learn the basics of photography. I mean, who's his audience? Like extremely... His audience are people. beginners kind of no. thing? No. His audience is everybody. It's people that want to find reviews of cameras. They turn to him because he has reviews of, of lenses or cameras that are very technical mm -hmm. because he's, a, he's an engineer of some sort and did some something. I've, I've read some of his uh, reviews about like just printing in general, which are really detailed. Usually. They're really detailed, but they're over the top. Yeah, it's been a so, while since I've So read he talks about from him. this stuff like 
they're for the people that find his site are beginners and amateurs that search out this stuff. That's why he puts out a D thirty three hundred video. Yeah, because that's what people. That's the most people are going to search for. So then they find it and they think he's so cool because he just gave him how to set up the camera. It's one of the reasons why I make one of the videos on how to set up the camera so that I can explain stuff. In my opinion, why I would do it this way. I just think that this is this is so far over the top, the wrong information that it's setting up people for failure right off the bat to hate photography and blame their gear for making bad pictures. Yeah. When they should blame Ken Rockwell. <laughs> blame Rockwell. Blame Rockwell. Blame Ken Rockwell. It's like blame Canada from yeah, South Park. I know, I know. Blame Rockwell. Blame <laughs> Rockwell. This country's gonna ride tomorrow that the freaks can fry. Okay. It's time for flying solo. How are we doing anyway. on time? Thank you guys for watching that part. Uh, that's my rant. I haven't ranted on Ken Rockwell in a long time, and it was well-deserved there because that's crap. And don't come back to me and tell, tell me that I'm being an elitist asshole because I'm saying that he's wrong. I'm just saying that I don't think he's right in any stretch of the imagination, and I'm not being an elitist. I'm trying to make the beginner photographers out there be better photographers as quickly as possible by getting them what I think is the best information out there right off the bat. Even if you go read Digital Photo School, digital-photography-school, one of the largest photo websites out there for education, they won't sit there and spew that crappy information at all. Yeah, it's surprising. I mean, the stuff that he brought up especially just I don't understand why he was like talking like it's 2002 with hard drive space and oh, memory hard cards drive and, space and 12 and JPEG if you want, and rolls for people that only want to get 12 pictures on their card <laughs> do I even need an improv class <laughs> I'm Ken Rockwell shoot in JPEG basic everybody that's the only way to be. Be a hero. Shoot with a GoPro in basic mode. <laughs> Fudge. Moving forward. <laughs> I, I, I got worked up. You I did got get worked up. up. I thought that laughing was good. That, that was a pretty solid, like, evil, weird, <laughs> creepy laugh. The Ken Walkwell laugh. <laughs> it's like a half... I just I talk I'm talking like he's a Canadian with flappy I was just heads from say, South Park. That's exactly how you're talking. Ha, I'm Ken Rockwell. And I think that the only way to go is to shoot JPEG basic. And I know that I'm beating this term up a lot, but I'm just telling you that I think this is the best way. I don't care if you have a floppy head because I'm Canadian with a floppy head, guy. I'm not your buddy pal. You're not my pal guy. I won't come on your podcast, Frono's photo, because you're American. You're American and you make fun of us. Terrence and Philip. Wait, is he actually Canadian? Or no, you? he's not Canadian. <laughs> I think he lives in New York or California. One of the two. That's okay, funny. can I get the flying solo now? Hey man, can I'm you stop bringing up Ken forward. Rockwell? Sutter, you look like you're about to float away. It looks like you're <laughs> you're sitting in, in. It looks like you're sitting in a lazy river, in a in one of those two tube, tubes, one of those tubes. In Urban Outfitters. In Urban Outfitters, <laughs> and he's taking it off. What does that mean? Fight. Do you want to fight? <laughs> are you again? What are you? Are you atomosing me? Are you going to atomos me? I was warm, Jared. Nobody can hear you. Oh, you were warm? How could you be warm in a flotation device without arms? It has no sleeves. <laughs> Ken Rockwell says that you should get only jackets that have sleeves. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I know. People at home are probably yelling. Move He's on already. He's going despise you now. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to say... I want to hear your guys' opinion. Do you think this was too over the top? You know... You know Whatever. I just trying to make help people learn photography and I'm done beating it up. Flying solo, Sutter, when you get back there, take the clock again. Give me a minute fifteen on the clock minute and a half minute twenty. <laughs> that you probably won't follow. Right. All right. Flying solo, lots of questions, and from one of these questions, I am picking somebody who's gonna spin the wheel of fro. I said that up on the site. Nice. Darren McCall. Okay. I will be traveling in Italy in October, staying at River del Gardena on Lake Garna. Great. <laughs> we'll be traveling to Venice and uh, Loma. Okay, okay, good. I got, I'm getting to his question, finally. <laughs> My question is, would it be better to wing it, as they say, and just go with the flow or scout areas, buildings, areas of interest, and such like? Dot, 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 dot. I think it will be a, a, a guided tour, so may not have uh, as much time to set up a tripod and other things. So... 
if you're going to a place that you don't know anything about, there's a thing called Google. You may be <laughs> able to one day, and I'm not being a dick, sorry. I'm not being a dick to you at all. I'm saying, what I'm saying is you have Google. You can search out locations that may be good for photos. Why are you laughing at me? Because it's just funny. You're like, there, there's a thing called Google. But I didn't mean that I as know, a dick. I know, you didn't. So that's but... why I'm re prefacing this. <laughs> Jesus. I thought it was funny. Thank you. I'm worked up from the Ken Rockwell thing. I know. You got to, you're a little tense but now, But thank dude. God my butt feels good in this chair. <laughs> I guess the one thing I could tell you. Um, so what I'm saying is any location you're traveling to, I will be going to Israel in two weeks at the time of this recording. May 4th, heading to Israel. I'm looking up locations that would make for good photos because if it's a good location, you can find it on the internet and then you can do things like that and such and then and then some. Basically, use the internet, find the locations, see local tourist spots, and then find some beaten, beaten off paths. <laughs> <laughs> paths that are off the beaten path. Well, you know what I'm saying. Hit the bell. <laughs> uh, doorbell. Wait, that's not the right one. Well, the funny it? thing, well, the, well it, it's not the buzzer anymore because I took the batteries out of that to use in my other thing. So we'll just use a doorbell. <laughs> Jeremy Bowles. Because you guys are so busy most of the time, when do you have... When you do have some downtime, what do you do to relax? What do you do to relax? Uh, sleep. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, he's smiling. He's got a weird grin on his face. <laughs> what was you? I didn't you know you thinking? were gonna throw it to me. I was caught off guard. Uh, right guard. I, I go outside. I don't know. I'm I, trying to I think. I, my relaxing might be physical to other people. Like I like to ride my bike or skate or hike or something. Along I want those lines. to ride my bicycle, my bicycle, my bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle, 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 bicycle. I uh, I want to ride my bicycle. Sorry. I think I just watch TV and and relax when I can, which isn't. Often, I, I, you know, I have trouble relaxing. Yeah, um, I don't think you relax much at all. <laughs> I go to yoga and I don't relax. Have you been doing that? Oh, like yeah, a lot? I went twice this week. I went on Monday and, and Wednesday. Yeah, and Did, Dominic Episcopo, funny is story. He is he there? He takes the same class as me. We just haven't been there at the same time. Oh, really? But yeah, he's going to be doing some yoga thing at his at his studio. He's a cool dude. Yeah, so I'm still waiting to run into him at yoga. But see, the problem with yoga and me is like. It's not like my buddy and me, yoga and me. You remember my buddy and me? Yeah. Okay, you don't know you don't know my buddy and me, Sutter. It was this Okay, back my buddy and me. Am I going to give you extra time? Yeah. My buddy and me. So, when you wanted to have a friend, you would get my buddy. And my buddy used to ride around with you on your big wheel, and he was this guy with like blue jeans, and I think he had red hair. Something I'm like so that. So confused. My right buddy, now. Google my buddy and me when you get home. There's that thing called Google, or use Lycos. Um, what? Exactly. Alta Vista. Okay. Four for one, or Alta Vista actually can. Anyway. And then there was my little monster who came with handcuffs that you could break. They were orange, and he was purple. You remember my monster? I don't know if I remember that one. So then they had my buddy. And then they had my buddy for women, girls, I think. I, I don't know. I'm not I a girl. One so. of those. <laughs> you had one of those? No. No. And I used to use the handcuffs. No. Pink from handcuffs? My, no. No. Um, uh, what was the, So relaxing. I, I go to yoga. I may sit there and watch a show at night. I don't like to... Uh, I don't like to spend time during the day watching TV. That just doesn't do it for me. It's not relaxing. All right, next question. Uh, it's not a question. It's a top five. Ah, it's the bottom one. I love these things, except we haven't gotten any of these lately. Uh, what band or artist from the 50s would you like to shoot? It's from many, the 50s? It's not many from the 50s. I'm going to say Buddy Holly. Yeah. Ooh, wee, ooh, I look just like Buddy Holly. <laughs> or Weezer, in that oh, case. Oh, and no Mary Tyler Moore. I don't care what they say about me anyway. I don't care about that. Uh, you are in a tag team match. Pick one of the following. Tag to team be back your again. Uh, oh, wait, wait. You're in a tag team match. Pick one of the following to be your partner to fight the other two. Uh, Ken Rockwell, Sidney Crosby, Billy Joe Armstrong. I'm taking Billy Joel. Ar Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Billy Joel Armstrong. BJA. I'm taking Billy Joel Armstrong because Sidney Crosby is a pussy and Ken Rockwell's Ken Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he can fight. I, I, don't know. I don't know, but still, I'm taking Billy Joe. Billy Joe because he's a psychopath that will probably flip 
<laughs> nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's all clean now, though. Yeah, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, Toucan Sam or Tony the Tiger? They're great. I would do Tony the Tiger That's personally. Tony the Tiger. Uh, Lytro at a Modest Yahoo concert or D4S at a, at a Nickelback show. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this photograph. Every time I do uh, it makes me laugh. I would take totally take uh, D4S over shooting. I mean, I'll, I'll go to the Nickelback show. It's probably a fun show. Daniel Adair's on drums. Better photography gig, deadliest catch or chasing tornadoes? Deadliest catch because chasing tornadoes are sitting in a car the whole time. That is true. Uh, so I would deadliest catch it all day of the week because then you could eat some of those crabs. Oh, crabs so good. Tony Battleson, when shooting a concert like the Arcade Fire concert, how do you keep a cool head with all of the annoying things happening? They seem to just pile on in this particular case. You just keep a cool head because you yep. learn that if you flip out, there's no there's no reason to flip out. It is what it is. You are at the beck and call where that you're at the whim of the band security. You're not going to win a fight with them. No. You're not going to win a fight with security. You're not going to win a fight with PR. You know the PR girl hates me already. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, I'm not going to say it on here. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, happy Passover. I, um, she hates me. I don't know why she hates me. I don't either. I never hit on her. <laughs> Maybe she wants me to hit on her. She doesn't listen to this show. You think? She if she wants listen you to, to hit on her, show. though, then she's probably watching. If she wa- <laughs> hey, Rachel, you want to come over for Passover dinner? I'll smear some matzah with some butter and some morosis. Oh, shit. It's herosis, not morosis. I don't know what any of that is, but it sounds very dirty. It's a Seder plate. <laughs> it does sound There's dirty. a shank bone, a the, lamb uh, shank. Sounds even dirtier. There's uh, <laughs> some some bitters. There's some salt water. <laughs> There's 10 plagues. Okay. All right. Uh, what, where, uh, yeah, that's. you have anything to say about that? Uh, yeah, like you said, you're not going to change anything. I mean, I almost got... Kicked out of a uh, Black Keys photo pit, for example. I'm just going to be one second. Um, I'm going to be out of Black Keys. Why, why did I do that? Black Keys, though, because I yelled at the security guard because he was flipping out over something really stupid, and I was just really pissed off. And he was two seconds away from kicking me out until I told him that I was shooting for the label. And then he was like, okay, fine. You're lucky. Blah, blah, blah. You're lucky. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? And their security guards are, like, decked out in suits. Like, they look like... Uh, Secret security kind of people. And secret service, not secret SS. Service. They're not Nazis. They're not uh, secret service. Yeah, secret service. But um, yeah, that, that night kind of sucked. But I got some good images, though. Well, speaking of concert photography, I did uh, I, I did an interview with Creative Live yesterday because they replayed my Creative Live from I when I was up there. a very small clip of it when you had posted about it. And I will say their room is so reflective when it comes to just echoes yeah, and I noticed you couldn't even hear me on the mic. You no. just heard the replay on yeah. the, the reverb. It was really they should pad that thing up because or maybe I, mean, I thought your place is bad, but that place was it's is it small? Well, yeah, but yeah, it's a lot of reflective stuff. But maybe people don't just, project like me. That is true. That's that's the other thing too. So so basically, what I'm bringing up is I will be out in Creative Live. We haven't picked the exact dates, but it's sometime in July. And right now, the premise of it is concert photog- is low light photography. I think I'm going to change it up though. We're going to do a concert shoot. I'm going to walk through how to get passes i'm gonna write emails right there i'm gonna get a manager on the phone to to be a dick or to be nice or to do whatever i'm gonna get a manager on the phone to do that it's called the black keys well (laughs) well, i'm gonna have security guards there i'm gonna do everything that i want to do and um for because it's low light i'm also gonna do low light sports i think indoor sports because i think these are things in combination that are gonna help people yeah so that's why i'm gonna do that for creative live cool uh aaron glansberg jew uh, probably Glansberg. You're Jew. A- Aaron Glansberg. <laughs> Happy Passover. Um, what is the ideal brightness setting for editing on IMAX? Good question, by the way, because there are a lot of people like that. This is what I do. So max it out, minus three. That's where I put mine. I max it out, then hit the brightness three times low. That's how I've done it for the past couple of years. That's how I make my Adorama Pix prints. I... And remember, when making prints, what I say is if it looks perfect on the screen, brighten it up a little bit more yeah. before you send it out like to print. Like a third stop. Just a third, a quarter, something, something mm-hmm. small. Brighten it up just a little bit with the exposure because when it's printed, you have to remember it's not going to have any backlight behind it. Yep. Bruce Brilly. 
You're pushing your camera settings to the max and can't play with shutter speed. Are you more apt to sacrifice depth of field or add noise high SO, high ISO for greater depth of field? I will take the noise any day of the week if that allows me to get a sharper image in focus. Yeah. Because if it's out of focus and not tack sharp in this day and age, I feel that it's not really useful unless it's some kind of very interesting image. Yeah, well, this day and age, for sure. I mean, back in 1950, it didn't really matter. Right, back then, and see, that's one of those things. People that, I've got that video that I said, if you think this is a great photo, it's not, here's why. And that has a couple hundred thousand views on it. Never expected that to happen. But it's the one where the girl's in the water and her eyes are out of focus, but her brow line's in. And I just said, in this day and age, there's no excuse for not being in focus. Or you can't, fix it you know you don't have Lytro. <laughs> you don't have the new google camera to do that stuff but it's more important today with the gear that we have to get tack sharp images and being soft is not an excuse anymore it's very true it just it in my fuck forget my opinion <laughs> in my opinion then screw that's just how i feel that's just how I feel. Is that it's that it's meant if it is meant to be tack sharp, it needs to be tack sharp. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it to say that, oh well, it's just a little soft. If it's a little, it's not good. Yeah. It's just not there. Because you have the ability to moving on. Adrian Butcher. It's A D R I A N. It has above the A a thingy. Mm-hmm. Hey Fro S and S. <laughs> when on a shoot, I use two bodies and carry four lenses. I worry a lot about dust and crap getting on my sensors. Well, don't take it in the bathroom with you. <laughs> and the lenses when changing the glass. How do you change your glass on assignment to minimize the flow of crap in your body or glass? Also, how do you best clean your lenses too? I use a lens pen and lens cloth, but at times I still see a film of junk on... So you look at my lenses all the time, right? Your lenses are dirty as hell. They're not that dirty, by the way. They're pretty bad, dude. You end up cleaning them. I do. You use the lens cloth that you can get in the store.fronosphoto.com. $14.99 gets you three free le- three lens cloths with free shipping. But yeah, I'm, I, I like my lenses clean depending on what I'm going. Oh, not depending. I like my lenses clean. But I've never been afraid to change my lenses in the field whatsoever. That's what you need to do. It doesn't hurt the pictures at all. It's not like you're sitting there in the desert I took my D4S in the desert, my D3 at the time, D3, to Israel and spelunked. That means you were spelunked. You're, you're going through caves, crawling around yeah. in, in dust. Everything was fine. Changing lenses. Just don't be dumb about it. Don't change it in the middle of a fly trap, you know, with a bunch of <laughs> flies flying around. So you have a... Bzzz, oh, a spider web. Let me <laughs> change it. Right. You know, <laughs> right. Through the web. You know, you, yeah. don't be afraid to change. Rule of thumb. Tilt the camera down. Sorry. Turn it off. Tilt the camera down, take the lens off, put a new lens on, put the lens cap back on the other, clean your lenses often, don't use solvent on them. I breathe on them. I don't care what anybody says about that being damaging. I've done that forever. That's not going to do anything to your lenses. That's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of malarkey. Malarkey. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, don't be afraid to change your lenses. Sam, I do the same thing. Sam Dunworth Sutter. Oh, no, Sam Dunworth. Sutter, <laughs> Sutter, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you grow up, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, though. What do you What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Um, what inspires you? Where do you want to go? Who are you looking to be when you become an those adult? Those are a what? lot of different questions. <laughs> I know. Just start. When from... you go back to the future, who are you going to be? <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as my personal future, I definitely want to be a photographer. I still haven't found. The full direction I want to go. But yeah. I still Wait, let me get the time. Haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> Look at all his notes on the page. <laughs> at least he's making notes. All right, what do you want to be? Um, well, as of now, just a photographer. As long as I can make it in this field, I'm more than happy. If I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, new. York, New York! Oh my god. Dude, your neighbors <laughs> have to hate you for singing that loud. They do. Some people hate singing, <laughs> but you know what I've said about the singing? What? And we'll get back to Sutter. 
the singing literally takes up no more than two minutes out of an hour and 35, 40 some minute show. I would say I think what def- people get upset about is the time and placement of the singing. Yes. And that is called a show. Okay, <laughs> back to you. But I didn't always want to be a photographer. Hit the bell. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> no, go I ahead. guess I'm done. No, go ahead. I, I really want to hear what I really want to hear what you have to say. Um when I was in like early high school, I wanted to be a pilot for a really long time and I actually started flying. I was a student pilot for a year. And what happened to your pilot instructor? Um, he was arrested <laughs> for what? what? For videotaping his basketball players because he was a basketball coach as well in the shower. Oh, that's weird. And they were middle school kids. You might be in some of those videotapes. <laughs> that's a bad thing. All right, what else do you want to be? Uh, then after that, I wanted to go into aerospace and aeronautical engineering, which I was wow. more than capable of doing. Um, I, oh, he's an elitist. I, know, I didn't mean it like that, but um, <laughs> yeah, most exactly. of my classes in high school revolved around that. I was doing a lot of technology education, physics, my mathematics stuff. <laughs> Dr. freaking Sutter over here, so man. There's a smart dude, Professor man. Sutter. And uh, when I did that balloon project where I put the cameras on the balloons, uh, University of Rochester actually noticed that and offered me a scholarship for, I think, 20 or 30 a year as a junior. Wow. And I didn't even apply. They just what? said I had to apply, and I got the scholarship. So why didn't you take it? Because I didn't want to go to school. <laughs> well, and it's Rochester also. But still, that's amazing. Yeah. You didn't want to go to school? So how are you furthering your brain and education now? Um, I read a lot of articles. I still like doing math, and physics really interests me. Anything space involved, I get really excited for. Do you, well, you've been watching Cosmos? I have not, but it's something I need to get into billions and billions of stars it's it's a very fo- photo uh, it's it's a lot of photography in it it's all light they talk about photography they have a whole thing about photography on it that's cool that's why i want neil degrasse tyson to oh, come on did they respond they responded that he's busy they didn't respond no because you actually reached out to him i did reach out did you forget it steven no. no he's fine um, all right so we'll go to the next one. I, that's very interesting while steven's reset i'd like to hear more but you got to take care of the other cameras so that was very interesting. We learned more about Sutter right there than about a lot of stuff that he's like a smart kid. What'd you get on your SATs? Um, I, should I talk to I got a 1510 on my SATs, which is low because but, I didn't do the writing. Wait a second. It's but the, you mean the, the new SATs. newer standard? The new one, out of 2400, is, right? Out of 2400. Yeah. What is that? Those SATs are out of 1600. Oh, good. Do the cameras and then I'll come back and talk to you. <laughs> Did you do this one? That's, that's, oh, I, I got a 940. Out of 1,600. Which is Horrible. probably about almost the same as what he got. Out of the new score. I wrote a paragraph instead of an essay. Oh, wow. Oh, so you literally hurt. Oh, we're talking to the camera. I mean the f- mic. Talking to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I could find the mic for a second. Um, I got a 1510 on my SATs, but I wrote a paragraph on my writing instead of an essay. Right. So I don't remember. I think I only got like a one or a 200, maybe a wow. 300 on my writing. On the writing See, I'm not section. afraid to say I had nine. I did terrible. I did terrible too. I was fine on certain things, but my reading comprehension or paying attention, like I am not good. I was never good on standardized tests. Mm-hmm. My mom was never good. I was never good. And that's not an excuse. I just wasn't good at them. Confused the crap out of myself all the time. But, you know, talk to me. And I can give you information and answer your questions. But sitting here reading A, B, C, or D, I just I never did well. And then my reading comprehension stuff was horrible. Just horrible. Dude, Nine, honestly, I, I think like the hardest thing for me on those tests were, was uh, the part where you had to uh, transcribe the paragraph in like cursive because I haven't written in oh, cursive. That's, that's a thing? It? Dude, I haven't. That yeah. took me forever. I haven't written cursive since like. There was a thing I was like, like six or You have whatever. to write the, like, age. there's a paragraph on the yeah. back that's like, I, Stephen Eckerd. Yeah say all this other stuff. It's like a written contract and you have, you have to, to write it in cursive. cursive. It took me forever. Oh, that, that was the hardest part for me. Oh, I didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, I guess these days when they change it to the 2400 score, they Aren't they, they going back that. to 1600? I think they are or they They did may already, have already. But yeah, I got a pretty bad score too. I think mine was a 16 something or 1700 something. And Antonelli didn't equal out to like a thousand on the old They don't even look at it. They don't even look at that stuff. Yeah. It's an art school. All right. Matthew Erdy. Is it a requirement for photographers to have multiple streams of income to make enough money to survive? And the S is a money sign. Um, <laughs> nothing is required of anything to do anything. In my opinion, I feel that it's very important in this day and age to have multiple sources of income to be to sustain yourself. 
I, you know, you hear those people say, I want to be a pro. I want to go pro photographer. And in that case, I, you don't just go pro. You work your way up. You have a job and you have a side job of taking photos or you're a photographer with a side job of doing this. It's just a little bit of everything is important to do. I almost drew on the table. It's very important to do those things. I think it's not a requirement unless you, you know, you, it just extra funding is always important. Uh, Trent Coleman, how are your boots working out for you? Also, can you sing Jar of Hearts? Oh, God. I'm not singing Jar of Hearts <laughs> anymore. Um, Trent Coleman, how are the boots? The boots are fantastic. I've worn them everywhere. I'm debating how what I'm taking to Israel. Uh, they might as well wear them to Israel because... I was going to say, why don't you just bring the boots? The, that's all I'll take, but... Do you wear shorts with those boots? I guess. Yeah, I, I don't I'm think they're... I'm looking at Sutter right now. I guess anything goes. <laughs> <laughs> you never said what kind of boots you had, by the way. I have Echo. Listening. They're Echoes? You they're made by boots. Echo. Yeah, I don't... And Joe McNally posted in the picture of his Burj Dubai, uh, Burj Khalifa, Khalifa yeah. at the top of it, he just like, uh, took a picture of the boots, and then he did an article about the boots, and then I bought them. Because I'm like, if he's traveling the world and these are the boots he uses as a photographer, well, then they might. As well, then I've been looking for a solution for me. Then I'm going to buy it. And he had them for like 20 years. Yeah. Didn't he say something like that? That's and product still- awareness. That's what. That's what it is. Yeah. He didn't advertise for them, and I'm not advertising for them. I simply use them. Yeah. I forget which model, but I bought them. Uh, what did I buy them off of? Zappos. Zappos. Yeah. And uh, shout out to the people over at Zappos that are fro listeners, because there are. Uh, so, no, I won't go ahead and sing this song, but he leaves <laughs> us with some jokes. Oh, Question. Gosh. How do you drown a, drown a hipster? Uh, are you going to say it? Or should I say it? In the mainstream. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one. I like that. Why did the hipster burn his tongue? Uh, <laughs> because he ate his food before it was cool. Oh, you knew that one. I know all of them. <laughs> Give us more, because that's all he had. Um... <laughs> Oh, God. Now I'm on the spot. Let me think. Well, think about it. We'll keep going. And then you just raise your hand. Just randomly throw them in. Chad (laughs) Tavernia. More important to image quality, sensor size or quality glass? Quality glass. Thomas Beck. And I picked that question for a reason. I want people to know that glass is important. Glass, 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 glass. Yep. Thomas Becker. It seems all of my clients, architects, hotels, real estate, restaurants, refuse to play the license game. They pay for the shooting, but won't for the image licenses. They want all the usage all the time. How would you educate them to understand that? Uh, thank you, and keep up the good work with the Stevens. <laughs> I think that, yeah, that's becoming a bigger problem these days. Is it a problem, or is it not a problem? Is it... I mean, you're not going to educate these people to tell you that licenses are important because they'll go find some other guy or girl to go or kid to go shoot these photos instead that are going to shoot and deliver. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have a guy named Michael Zorn come in, and he's out there on the road with a bunch of different huge artists, and he's all about rights, selling the rights, owning the rights, and then licensing. That's his thing. Um, I didn't have major success doing that myself. I always found that I wanted to take that payday and take that lump sum, that buyout right off the front. If somebody's going to off right off the rip, if somebody's offering you a buyout to own the images and it's a good amount of money, even, even, um, what's his name? Bob Gruen said that if people would have offered me X amount of dollars, I totally would have done it because it's a nice chunk of change. Um, I've done it, especially with modest Yahoo, where I own the rights to the images. They just have an unlimited usage of what I send them. I still own them. Yeah. They have unlimited usage. Did you think of any? Uh, who was the first hipster? Uh, You've probably never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> More? I could look up some. <laughs> All right, look up some for later, for the end of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we did Thomas Beckler. Juan Van Staden. I have listened to the podcast on iTunes since the start and love how it has grown. I would love to know what your plan is to take it even further. Maybe adding a female on the table. We would add her to the table, not on the table. <laughs> Thanks again for all the free content. Um, I think it's evolving. Yeah. And it's always evolving. Like, it evolved from me just sitting at the computer to... You, you know, well, from where it originally started, I, I look at Raw Talk as there has been a couple iterations. There was the original attempt, which did have a female. It had Leora sitting at the table, and then she moved to Brooklyn. Um, and then it was just me and some guests. And then it was just me. 
and then it was me at the laptop. I really think it's two versions. The newer version is the modern era, the one that you've become a part of. Um, so that helped it grow. And now Sutter becomes a part because he sits there and we throw it to him and he has some good things to say. And he's a freaking scientist. Yeah. Don't tell him he's a freaking <laughs> scientist. He's like a, he's like a Professor Sutter. <laughs> Professor Sutter, everybody. Um, Is that because of my glasses? Sh- you didn't hear me saying that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No, you're Warby Parker's that you and your girlfriend having a blanket date. <laughs> What'd you have? What'd you have? Michael Jackson's kid over for a blanket date? Uh, <laughs> blanket date? Well, they did. Isn't that what it said on Instagram? Blanket date? No. We were, that was just the picture. We were you watching two are so movies. Cute. <laughs> what movie? Definitely use the Billy uh, Boys We ended that up just night. watching Twin Peaks. <laughs> Twin Peaks. Do you know that show? Yeah. It came out in uh, like 1990. Yeah, I, I understand that. Sorry. You know, with <laughs> airplanes and stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so evolving, it evolves. What could we do next? We can go on the road with it. We can do some live shows, right? Live, not live as in live to the internet, as in we go to a place and turn it into a show where people show up and watch it. You know, like Smodcast does, where they'll travel around and sell tickets. People watch and ask questions and they're entertained by it because it's fun. That would be cool. That's something I could do. Uh, maybe it's a tour of uh, camera stores from that organization, and we go and we do those and do it there and have a live audience. That could be fun. Uh, other than that, I'm not really sure where else it could evolve. Maybe it becomes a comic book men type thing like Kevin Smith has for a TV show. Mm. Maybe that becomes it. And these are the band of characters, right? Would what? you like a joke? Sure. <laughs> what happens when a hipster falls? I don't know. They tumble her. <laughs> Tumblr. <laughs> Do they right. still use Tumblr a lot? I feel like a lot of people I don't love know. Tumblr. Really? But oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I just I never really see people using it that often anymore. It's like a Reddit sort of a thing, just the community itself. Huge, like just yeah. Tumblr. Big underground. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Hipsters. Here we go. Top five. Top of the page. Top five. We've got uh, favorite film camera you've used. That was the F5. That's what I figured you were going to say. Uh, favorite film. I don't. Does that mean movie or film? No, type. I used to use a Kodak had Kodak NC and VC. Mm-hmm. NC stood for neutral contrast, and VC VC stood for Viet Cong. <laughs> it stood for vibrant contrast. So I used the VC film. It was thick and juicy. I loved it. That's all you. All that punchiness. Yep. Uh, what celebrity would you choose for your best man? That's What's, a hard question. Well, that's a guy. I got to pick a guy for my best man. Shoot. I don't know. What celebrity? Um, I'm going to... Why don't I go with Don Draper? Don Draper? Yeah. <laughs> uh, celebrity wife. I'm going to go with Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen? She's so cute. She is cute. Uh, she's Cinderella. <laughs> Oh, no. I want to go say hi, Carly Ray Jepsen. Sutter, this one's toward you. Uh, do you own a fixie? First of all, do you know what a fixie is? I do own a fixie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a fixie well, is. They do wrote it's a hipster bike, apparently. What is it? All right, it's a, a fixed gear. So oh, a fixed gear. Uh, that makes sense. Basic. You know how when you're riding a bike, you can stop pedaling and it'll coast? Yeah. You can. Well, the back hub is locked, so you have to pedal constantly. But that's Why? also nice because you can have speed control, so you can push against yourself, and you can control your speed independently <laughs> of how fast you're going. Right, tell me, what is the square root of a fixie? I couldn't tell you. Why don't you ask Sam Green? Because he has one, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys have, like, a bike gang? <laughs> he, he actually rides unicycles. <laughs> Hey, um, I can't argue with people came, like, having, an elephant act- too while having he's at it. activities. <laughs> uh, Pascal Lavery! Pascal has that little baby. Very cute little yes, kid. Yes, I saw that. Do you get that mood sometimes to sell everything and just do something else? Honestly, no. I don't. Do you? Uh, no. I mean, I don't have much to sell. But even so. if you did, have you ever been like, I'm going to sell my gear and I'm done with photography? Uh, no. No, not really. No. I wouldn't. I, honestly, I haven't. You? I mean, I've lost motivation at times and inspiration, but yeah. never enough to just dump it and go Anton Drummond 
I see a lot of wedding portfolios with the perfect couples and their families, but do you think a photographer having photographed a wedding of a couple with disabilities could hurt their chances of landing those high-end clients if he, she puts those images in their portfolio? In other words, do you think a potential client would be biased based on those images? Get me the wheel of fro, please. Yep. It's a, uh, it's a good question. That's that why. That question. is an unbelievable question that I never thought about. Yeah. Are we good with time? Yeah, I think we're fine. All right, so get that up here. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to say yes. I think some people would be discriminated. Well, it's I tough. think some people, I don't know. I would hope that somebody wouldn't sit there and say, uh, I'm not going to go with you because you've shot a wedding of uh, handy, capable people. I don't think that, that that makes any sense whatsoever. So let me just go back on what I was going to say at, at all. No, I don't think anybody's. Nobody should discriminate against you because you've taken photos and put them in your portfolio. I wouldn't put it as a full-on portfolio of just that stuff. But if that is beautiful, if they are beautiful images and it's beautiful art and it showcases your work, then I have no problem with you showing that. I don't think anybody should give you an issue or hopefully would give you an issue with that. That's a, that's a good answer, yeah. All right, so because I thought that was a very, very, very good and unique question that I haven't heard before. Very unique, yeah. That I'm deciding that Aaron Drummond is spinning the Wheel of Fro today. Right today. Now. today. <laughs> I'm coming to America today. Neil Diamond, everybody. All right, so what do we have around the Wheel of Fro? We've got Squarespace for that free year of the Business Edition Squarespace. We've got the Fro Flash Guide. We've got Black Rapid because I scratched out Adorama picks. Um, oh, by the way, last week, the guy who won the Black Rapid didn't get the Black Rapid. What? And I'm sorry if you're watching and listening. Wait, why didn't he not get because it? Because I sent him an email and said, what's your address so I can send you your prize? And, and he was like, that sounds a little fishy. Like, like, like it was spam. I was like, okay, I'm sending you my video guides because that's something I don't have to mail. I have his email address. And then when he realized that it was... For the wheel of fro. For the wheel. Well, he knew it was the wheel of fro because I said, I said, would you like to spin the wheel of fro before the show? Uh -huh. And he's like, awesome, sure. So then I was like, all right, I need your address because the fro the wheel landed on something that I need to ship to you. And he's like, that just that sounds scammy. And I'm not gonna sit there and argue. I don't have time to sit there and argue. So I said, I'm sending you the video guides because I don't have to mail them. And then he realized that. And I'm sorry, I'm not going back. And I've already sent the video guides. Yeah, I don't think it's that. That's my story. Big of a deal. To, to no, and he it. got that, and I'm not calling him out for that. And sorry, but that's I just didn't have the time to sit there and try to explain myself. Well, hopefully, he likes the uh, video guides. Yeah. So <laughs> then we got the regular video guy. We have a think tank bag. We got a Rode microphone. Love our Rode mics. I've got the one on the computer too. We've got the Adorama picks. What are you doing, Sutter? Talking to Steven. Just checking the time. All right. We've got the Adorama <laughs> picks. We've got Lexar Hub, and we've got Borrow Lenses. Do you know how much borrow lenses is? 200 or 250? No, it's 250. I you got did? the confirmation. Nice. So $250 for borrow lenses. So what Woo. time is it? Wheel of Fro! I think that's a good spin right there. Round and round it goes where it stops. Nobody knows. The Wheel of Fro is going to stop on a question mark, question mark, question mark! Fro guides. Oh, it's so close. Did somebody just yell at me? Yeah, I did hear some kind of yelling. I heard yelling. One of your windows is open though still, right? No, I closed them all. Anyway, congratulations, Mr. Anton Drummond. You were very close to a question oh, mark. so close. It's not a question mark. I uh, know it's not. It's, it's not. not. It's the both of my guides. Congratulations on that. All right. <laughs> uh, we can remove this if we have time. Oh, uh. So Thank you, Sutter. <laughs> All right. I know. So that's the Wheel of Fro. Thank you to myself for giving up the, uh, the two <laughs> video guides. And thank you to all the people on there that supply us with stuff that they do not pay to be on the wheel. I ask them for stuff, and then they go on the wheel. So there we go. All right. Here we go. William Billy Billy, Billy Ray Hume. It says William <laughs> Billy. Oh, sorry. Billy squared. William Bill Billy Ray Hume. How do you deal with clients that keep asking for more once the job is done? Oh, I misread this earlier. I thought, I thought when I read it, he was saying, how do you deal with clients that keep see, reading comprehension? Remember the SATs? <laughs> yeah. I read this on the computer as 
How do you deal with clients who constantly ask you when the stuff's going to be done? And I was going to say, you have to set expectations beforehand beforehand yeah. of or set expectations of when it's going to be done so that they leave you alone but he's asking for the opposite he was saying i have to reread it reading comprehension <laughs> how do you deal with clients that keep asking for more once the job is done well the job is done what are they asking for like when they want like you to give jobs? them more no 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 when they say well it would be great if you gave me some eight by tens instead or oh that's a, what he's saying extra so stuff like that. How do you deal with that is you gauge the situation. You look at what type of client it is. If it's a returning client that is really not a pain in the butt and yeah, they're just asking for it. something extra and it's worth it, then then by all means, probably go with it. But if if it's somebody that's just has unrealistic expectations of something, you got to cut them off and say, oh, we'll get you next time. That's That wasn't part of it. I can charge you for it. I'll maybe give you a discount, but that's that is what it is. Hmm. Matthew Bright, how would you how would your friends describe you? I think you're the closest thing to a friend I have here. How would you describe me in all how would honesty? I describe straight you? up honesty. Oh man. Um a hard worker, first of all and foremost. Um you it's kind of tough. It's gotta be negatives in there, I'm sure. Uh I think a hard worker could be a negative too. <laughs> it's got to be. You, <laughs> You're I, kind of an asshole sometimes. Thank That's you. That's a negative. There you go. Not what toward else? me, but no, well, I've witnessed it. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're a nice guy. What else? You have a giant fro? Yeah. How do I think friends would describe me? I think they would describe me as hard. Hard to get along with sometimes. Uh, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. All right. Well, maybe I've gotten better then. Because I used to be, it used to be me, 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 me. Now it's just like two me's, not four me's. I mean, you get fed up pretty easy with stuff, I would say. I do have a short fuse sometimes yeah, now, which yeah. I'm working on again to not be so short fused. Yeah. But just certain things just tick me off, like ineptitude tick, and, and ticks me off. And you're actually like, as, much, as many, I would say as much as people assume that you're a very social guy, you're actually not <laughs> that much of a social per person. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I've got this persona that follows me around yeah. that I'm a big drinker and, and partier and you know my drinking style. Uh, yeah, it's rare. Yeah. So, well, I'm actually doing more of it. That's a good thing. Like <laughs> every two weeks, I now go and have a drink. Yeah. Um, and that's my more. No, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's cool that you can go to a bar like sober and not like even get anything and just hang out. I you can. Know I mean, like that's hard for me. Not that I'm saying like an alcoholic or anything, but I enjoy beer. I like the taste of beer. I really have to pee. <laughs> can you take the next question <laughs> while, while I pee, please? Okay. Are you going to answer it? No, or? you answer it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's something <laughs> up here. It's about medium format photography, and I don't do medium format. All right, well, it says Mark Payne. Uh, I guess that's who asked the question. Is digital medium format photography now something we should aspire to? The new Pentax looks groundbreaking. Yes, it does. Uh, but do you think the quality of the new full-frame cameras make them irrelevant? Um, I think it's definitely something that we should all aspire to. I mean, this is medium format there like jared said earlier there is a specific look to it and it's just very pricey though i wish yeah we could all... i think that's the tough part because like yeah. like the fuji x pro ones or whatever the fuji x whatever's they have like a really nice editorial look to them that i've found especially with their black and white i think that's the best way to explain it is this and editorial like look the dslr has a different look from that and then medium format has its Look. I think it has it has that look. shallow depth of field with the lenses and stuff too because and that five six on a medium format is like a two point eight yeah. or, or lower so it's like yeah I mean it's it's something a lot of people assume that since it's a pricey camera like a Hassie or something like that that you, people need to step up to that point they need to work their way up to a medium format camera I don't think it's necessary but. I it, think it's it, something to look. It is something towards, to look forward to it's and cool. if inspire that, you if it fits your style. If it fits your style, but I think, well, yes, yeah, studio Portraits, stuff would be studios, the best. Studios, exactly. I though want to try this thing at a concert because, and sorry, I had to pee, and no, I did not wash my hands. The reason I don't <laughs> wash my hands. Let me tell you about washing your hands. When you pee, and when, especially when I'm out, you know, there's. I touched myself. I didn't pee on my hands. <laughs> I think that the door is dirty. I think that the handles of everything else are dirty. And I'm not an OCD guy because I don't, I don't care. 
you know? I'd lick my, you know, it doesn't matter. But I just feel that I didn't touch anything other now, than myself. Yeah, I, a lot of people uh, tend to not wash their hands, at least my friends. If because you go number two, if, well, number two there's is different, a difference. But yeah, be, because it's so on. Uh, it's not like sat, you know, sanitized well, at all in the bathroom right, that you're in half like, the time, especially a bar. Well, my thing is bathrooms that have doors that you have to pull open instead of push out. Why? Why? Why do I have to pull the door? Well, especially when everyone's coming. Everybody's touching. So I always take a paper towel, open the door because I just washed my hands I if know. I washed my hands. Yeah. Right. And I like washing my hands before I eat and stuff, but... I do as well, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I didn't wash my hands when I went to the bathroom. You dirty dude. I'm dirty. <laughs> oh, hey, guess what? What? Thank you guys for taking that, because that was... I drank a lot of water because my voice... I did that interview before this. Yeah. Um, and I made a 21-minute video. Talk, I talked basically for an hour before you guys got here. There's a top five right there. It's right there. Oh, all right. Uh, peanut butter or protein shake? Uh, I like peanut butter. We'll go with peanut butter. That's because... Do you, do you drink protein shakes a yeah. lot? All right. Uh, baseball or hockey? Uh, hockey. Selena Gomez or Miley Cyrus? Selena Gomez. <laughs> Twerking or the Macarena? <laughs> hey, Macarena. Hi. Uh, travel by air or by train? Uh, travel by air. I've yeah. done the train thing to the Boston. Thing. I didn't hate it. it. You know, when you're with Adam or when you're with somebody, we're almost at the end. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Because we're already how long? How far? How in? far in are we? One hour, thirty six minutes, okay. and five seconds. We're almost done. You have like three pages left. No. <laughs> well, I'll get. I'll, I'll, okay. Um. I like. I like taking the 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 plane. Yeah. You get there quicker. I agree. You get there faster than you take it slow. That's where <laughs> I wanna go. Way down in. Kokomo. I'm pointing at Sutter's name. Oh, I know. attention. <laughs> Eric Simon. I wouldn't have answered anyway. What is, the photogra- that. what is photography to you? Is it an art, craft, means of expression, communication, or merely a job or a trade? To me, it's about creating. Photography for me is about capturing that image, having that feeling of that. I wrote this on Facebook and I just sent an email out today about that, that feeling you get when you see that image. That Im- you know what it is. Yeah. Like you, you don't get that feeling for everything, but when you get that feeling and that exhilaration of going, I got it, and then it comes to life, and you're like, holy shit, that image is it. It's a great feeling. That's that's the image. You know, to me, photography right now is a is a means to an end, and I'm not saying that it's a business. What what, what did he say here? A job or a trade? By no stretch of the imagination does it feel like a job or a trade. This is a. I look at business as being fun. This is fun to me creating being creative working with you guys we're, we i've built something pretty much from nothing yeah and you guys have come along and helped tremendously with this aspect of it and you've helped with the editing and you're sutter and you're just finding a place to he's our scientist to make yeah your resident professor <laughs> if we ever have a math equation that needs to be solved what's <laughs> x minus two over 12 <laughs> squared see i never got to uh calculus. you would have to like Equal that I out did to something, so then it. you could say equals like ten, and then I could back. You know what? The show's that. going long because of your talking this week. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. Uh, to me, it's about. I'll, I'll keep going, but that—that's to me. It's it, it's about creating. It's about the feeling I get when I take images. In the business side of it, it's about helping the others. It's about doing well for myself. It's about putting things out there into the world that help uh, that people are inspired by, and I just love doing it. I think it's a, a little bit of all of them for me. I mean, creating would probably be the number one if I had to pick one, but it's kind of a little piece of, of each. All right, I'll skip the next question. Oh, my God. I told you, you still got a couple pages left. Well, this one is... And are we doing Gear of the Week? Do we have anything? Or is that... My chair. We'll call my chair Gear of the Week. I didn't <laughs> even think about it. Gear of the Week is my Herman Miller <laughs> On chair. On this week's chair talk. On chair talk. Yeah. On chair talk. Steven has a chair. I have a chair. <laughs> and Gear of the Week's over. And gear of the week's over. Uh, Junior Wyatt, are you the best at what you do? If yes, what puts you on top? If not, what do you feel you need to do to get there? Uh, it's a good question. Hashtag raw talk. Hashtag one. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, there's always room to improve. Always. There's always room to improve. Am I on top at what I do? I like to think I do what... I, I wouldn't be doing things if I didn't think I was good at them. Or think that I was one of the best. I'm not the best. I don't know if anybody is is the best at 
this type of thing. I like to think we create a fun show. I think it's the best podcast in photography. And the reason being is it's not a boring photo talk nonstop, which some people like. I do, we do branch. I sing a lot. People don't like that. <laughs> but then we go off on other tangents. People don't like it, but it's still photo centric. We've got all these questions. Um, we'll just leave it at there's always room for improvement. I don't think I'm the best at this, but I do think I'm very, very competent with a lot of things. Yeah. Louis Jacques Bar- Barber- Bar- Barbu. Barbu. Why so much hate for the Tamron? Rev- reviews seem to like them better than Sigma, especially 24 to 70 and 70 to 200. Why? Because I think that they're built like crap. That's one of the answer. And the second answer is called advertising. Tamron likes to throw around some advertising money, and that usually has a way of making people see them as being better. Is that a good answer? That is a good answer. I've never personally owned a Tamron, or uh, I don't even know if I've actually ever used one. So I can't really comment on it. Have you, Sutter? Nope. Yeah. I think Sigma's blowing Tamron out of the water right now. I, I just per- I do too, but I, I personally think that I try to keep everything brand uh, Canon wise, like yeah. for my Canon camera. I've never Once even used get- a Sigma. I used to use generic, and uh, the quality just isn't there. Once you get to that point of that full frame, like I've said to people, you invest in the glass that goes with the camera. Now we have to see about that new 51.4 from Sigma. Which you're saying is like the best. They're saying it's amazing. Uh, Nick Dorsey, what has been your biggest struggle in building the Fro Empire or expanding your business and how did you overcome it? I think the struggles become inner struggles. Uh, It's not been drugs because I don't do them. Struggles are, are, are finding direction. What? Do you have an answer? No, I would say that's a perfect answer because you're constantly questioning yourself. I constantly question myself. I constantly question everything I do. And oh, yeah. that's a stroke. That's, I, and I think I've come to realize that that's a thing that a lot of artists have. You look at musicians that question everything they do. They could be the greatest musicians in the world, but then they feel like they haven't created something great. I'm always seeking approval of something, right? So yeah. uh, not, not as much as when I was, I noticed it when I was younger, but it's just, the biggest struggle is the is being happy in a direction I'm going. That is kind of the the biggest thing because I always want to do more. I always want to go another direction. I get very tired, not tired, but I get bored with the same thing. Like I'm always looking for a way to expand something. How can I do it different? Can we add a different camera? Can we do this? I because I feel like it gets stagnant real quick and gets old. But then I feel like if you add too much or or do too much of something, like it's it's overdone. Sure. You know, so it's a fine line. That's one of the things I struggle with is, is am I putting out really good stuff constantly? Uh, and is it, is it good? Yeah. I mean, uh, we have these conversations almost every day. That's just, that's just how it is, man. Yeah. There's a top five right there. Down top the five. Uh, hipster or goth or goth. Oh, Hey, what's Jenna? Is she hipster or goth or I, both? That's that is a very very good question. She's a, maybe she's a little. Both? I think she's a little bit both. Jenna, she's I'll take go- her. She's a goth. She's a hip, She's a, a gothster. <laughs> a gothster oh. or a hoth. <laughs> I can't. I'm, when I shoot her, you guys, uh, maybe I'll post some of the photos so you can see. Worst food known to man. Uh, <laughs> rustica. <laughs> no, I had rustica for lunch. By the way, what? I ordered a After steak all sandwich. The crap? I ordered a steak sandwich and fries. I just heard it again. Yeah, what was that? I think there's like a ghost. I heard that. Is that, that was Kevin weird. <laughs> Why am I yelling? It sounded like it was from the maybe elevator it's the elevator or whatever. <laughs> is someone like saying help? Is that what? I, what is going on? Sutter, go look and take the <laughs> take the ice light. Take a, <laughs> take a hammer. Is there or the elevator? I don't know. I don't know, but I feel like someone's watching me. All right. Well, the GoPro is... All right. Uh, what was the... Uh, uh, keep going. Worst food? I don't know. Yeah, worst food. Uh, stuck in traffic, listening to one song for hours. What song? Did I write a song in there? You did. I did. I wrote it because I didn't want to forget it. And but you said, I said, don't read. What, well, what's it, what is it again? I didn't know you liked these guys. Explosions in the Sky. Well, they have that all instrumental Dude, song so that you could just listen good. to over and over again. Explosions in the Sky. I do it for editing all the time. Right. I constantly listen to them. Yep. Them, Cigarose, a uh, bunch of other ambient instrumental kind of acts that you don't you know you don't if i had to be stuck to. in traffic that would be it uh 14 to 200 to 8 all in one or 100 to 400 to 8 all in one hypothetically 14 to 200 to 8 yeah I bigger agree. range definitely or uh, better range what will you first record 
What will your first record be titled? That's a good question. Frono's Photo. <laughs> Very simple. Number one. The blue the blue album. <laughs> the blue album. <laughs> the white album. It'd be the purple album. The pur- shit, you're right. <laughs> Alex Medvik, have you ever submitted images to a client that you weren't entirely confident in but had to turn into turn in something? Then after that, they have them, they see they love them anyway. Absolutely. A lot again, my that question earlier, what is my biggest issue thing and that's thinking that my work isn't good enough I, and i've had times where i haven't been satisfied with the concert photos and then i deliver them and they're like i've had these that are the too. best things ever you, you're amazing yeah so thank thank you all the thanks to all the people out there who take crappy photos that make really good photos that may not be the best of the best <laughs> look that much better yeah that really does help it does help it does Jim Anderson, I've started. Uh, I've heard that a 50 millimeter is one of the best lenses for portraits, which I don't agree with. I don't either. But you recently said you would choose a 70 to 200 millimeter for portraits. Why would you use a 70 to 200 over a 50? I think longer lenses are better for portraits. I love a 200 millimeter for a portrait, but a 50 just to me isn't a great portrait lens. You get uh, on a full frame camera. Exactly. That if is a big a, difference. If you're on a crop sensor, then a 50 is a good port. It's a close to good portrait lens because it's a like 75. 85. Yeah, 75. 85. I, I'm a if I had to pick my one lens for a portrait, it'd be 85-1-2. Same. <laughs> yeah. Eric Smith, what is your procedure regarding memory cards? Do you format before you before every shoot? Do you name the card before a shoot? I don't name a card before I shoot. I never reformat in the computer. Every card gets reformatted in the camera that it's going to be shot with. One, it's much quicker and it's, 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 it's better to do in the camera uh, because it... it has the camera talked to the card better? I reformat every card when it goes into the camera for a new shoot. Me too. Every time. Every time I, yeah, every time I take my camera. One more rapid fire right here. Okay. Or maybe there's two more. Is there another one under it? Uh, there is actually. Uh, going on a road trip, Steven Sutter or Steven Eckert? You can't choose. I'm going to go with Eckert. He said, sorry if I misspelled that, but you didn't, whoever you are, Mike Young. I don't know. You I didn't I, misspell I, my name. I don't know. Sutter is definitely a definitely go-getter guy. Maybe both of them. Sutter's in the back. <laughs> Shooting <laughs> hockey. because I'm not driving. <laughs> Why? Because you'll get tickets? Because we'll get a bunch of tickets. <laughs> no, because who wants to drive that long? <laughs> On a road trip. Okay. Shooting hockey or concerts? Oh, he must be home downstairs because he's turned the music up. He must be yelling, like probably because we're too loud. I don't know. I'll I'll double check after. He probably hates us. Maybe I haven't <laughs> checked my phone. Um, I would I would shoot hockey. I love hockey. Makes sense. But hockey would get boring, and but so do concerts. Dude, he's really bumping that music because I can hear that, and I never hear him. Buy the flash guide or wait for the video guide. They're two two totally different things. I was gonna say the same thing. Two totally different things. Um, but whatever you want to do, the the flash guide is gonna be less expensive because the the video guide is gonna be much. It's gonna be more expensive. Going to yoga or the bar? Yoga. Tank top or sports bra? I don't, well, I like mean, girls in sports bra better. I didn't know if they meant like for you. <laughs> and do you know what's better on girls? Tankinis. Tankinis are awesome. I still think they're hot. Should I go to the next one real yeah. quick? All right. Uh, Jason Rapp, this is for, from you. Wedding, shoot, or three song concert? Did you reset these? That one I'm doing in the uh, What'd you say? Wedding, Wedding shoot? shoot, or three song concert? Wedding. It's more fun and I get paid more. That is very true. Cardio or yoga? Yoga. What? <laughs> this is just weird. Uh, hotter, Eckert or Sutter? <laughs> That's a question? Yeah. We could skip that. Mm. <laughs> Clearly, me. Well, whoever's wearing a... Whoever would be wearing a flotation device, maybe you would. Float- <laughs> oh, and Sutter's picking it up. But those, th- those shoes that he's wearing right now with those socks... All right, moving forward. Country, country or city life? Mm. If I had a bowling alley in the city, in the country, I'd be happy. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't mind living in the city, but I also don't mind living in the suburbs. Yeah, I'm kind of a half and half on that. Yeah. If, if I had a big backyard, there's one more. Um, sweet or unsweetened tea? I don't, I don't drink tea, so I, I drink hot tea with no sugar or anything added. Just yeah. straight up black tea. This is going to be a two-hour show. No, it's not. We're almost done. No, it's going to be two hours. No, how much time are we in? One hour and 48 minutes. Yeah, we're yep. going to be done. This is the last question. Aaron Thomas, dear Sutter. <laughs> Aaron Thomas, dear Sutter, do you want to go with a photo folio just because Jared and Steven use Squarespace? Sincerely, a concerned listener. A concerned listener. No, the reason I was just looking into different options between Squarespace, uh, 
a photofolio. I use Smug Mug right now. Um, I don't sell prints anymore, so it's not something I need to keep paying for. Um, the reason that I really got turned on to a photofolio is because Adam Lerner's site is super clean. The format's really nice. Um, so I tweeted at him. I was like, hey, what, uh, like, what services do you use? He says, a photofolio. He highly recommended them. Then I checked the price, and then I was like, do I want to do this? I'm not too sure. $1,000 up front or $250 for four, for four months, months plus and then $17, $17 a month, month after That's, that. It's expensive. That is a guy really It's quality. Expensive. But it's half it the, is. after I get that 1000 out of the way, it's half what I'm paying now because I'm doing like 30 a month on my Smug Mug. That Smug Mug's 30 a month. I didn't realize well, that. Well, if you're going to be selling a lot I of stuff. Selling print op, and which I don't is sell a anything. Nice so all-in-one option. Is. And if you want to sell images... I recommend getting a Squarespace, which does have e-commerce, but it also has support for Smug Mug. So if you're looking for a solution to oh, do really? that, you can tie your Smug Mug in or just link it right to the Smug Mug for people to buy prints. I think they work hand in hand very well. That's convenient. Yeah, so after looking into it right now, a photofolio isn't something I can do financially. So I think I'm going to jump Squarespace. All right. To answer well, his question. Yeah, I'm going to get you set up with that. You're going to go set yours up, and then I'll get you an account for a year on me, and you can take care of that. That would be good. So if you're interested in Squarespace, squarespace.com slash fro. Use the code fro or frotube or raw talk, and you'll get 10% off your first order. That means 10% off your first year or month, whatever you decide to go with. How much time is left in that two hours? <laughs> Nine minutes, and thank you for the account. All right, you're welcome. So there you have it. This show was all over the freaking place, dude. Too many flying solo questions. I didn't delete enough of them. There's a lot of them. But yeah, you had even more. I had even more, but good thing I deleted a bunch of them. Um, the Ken Rockwell thing I forgot about already, but <laughs> I did. I got really worked up for that. You did. That's so, probably why your neighbor is bumping his music because you were screaming. Well, he wasn't supposed to be back yet. Well, he's supposed to be home. He's time? been away for a while. Mm. Well, and I've been playing the piano and practicing it and getting better. It is 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah, this there. is different. So, yeah, we're recording a couple hours later. We usually record at 12. We re usually record at noon. Eckert wasn't feeling well this morning, so no. he took an extra couple hours to sleep. He asked if we could do this later in the day. We didn't start recording till 5. Um, Setup took a while because you were also doing an interview. I had an interview and, and, and a meeting at the same time, and, and the Wi-Fi went down. And, and then is, I said, we probably will go over 7 o'clock, and you said, no, we won't. Well, we're not. Make sure I don't. It is, isn't it? it it's it, it's seven oh three. But right that's now. seven o'clock. But we haven't gone over two hours yet. No, I know it. <laughs> so so that that's a busy show. Uh, that Ken Rockwell thing really pissed me off. How much time? So I know <laughs> you're gonna get it to like one fifty nine. Like, uh, yeah, you have eight minutes. All right, the thing really upset me. I just don't. You heard what I said. I do want that cut up in cut it up into the. Into a yeah, it's fine. piece for a rant for me to put up. <laughs> it's on his notes. It's on All right, and I got to do that intro notes. right after this. I'll do the intro. All right. um, also on the notes. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just that was just very bad. And I emailed him. I said this is wrong. I said this is poison. And I said that to him. He hasn't responded back since. But I wonder why. But it has to be said. I'm not going to sit back and be PC and be the guy that sits right down the middle because, like I've said before. It's the 50% of the people love you, 50% of the people hate you, then have 100% not care. If you stand for nothing, or you have to stand for something, or you stand for nothing, then you're just a fly on, you're just a guy that's, or a girl just sitting there not having a stance. Well, and when your your brand is called I Shoot Raw, I think I, that, And I don't care if you shoot raw. I, I don't. I don't. But I think my you secretly do, though. No, I don't care what you do with your own work. Yeah. Just not following Rockwell's information there. <laughs> I think I just think it is a very good way to go with shooting your images because of what it does. Oh, it's the best quality way. Y yes, the full quality. Screw this mindless bull crap about space and taking up twelve pictures. You know, only twelve. <laughs> those are for twelve people that want twelve pictures on a card. On my sixty-four megabyte card. It's that statement that pissed me off. Yeah, actually, the whole thing did. So that's that. Thank you to uh, Alan's Camera dot com. Don't forget about my road reel. That's my road reel dot com for uh, like for their what? You want to spell that? <laughs> no. Atomos, thank you guys. Come up with those Atomos Ninja things. I want to hear some more names that future Adorama, <laughs> future Atomos products could be named. Hashtag me at me at Frono's photo and make sure you add Atomos there too. And squarespace.com slash fro. Yes, Sutter. Would you like a joke? Yeah, one more. <laughs> Why do hipsters like ice so much? 
Because it's cool? Because it was water before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> These jokes are pretty good. Actually. They are pretty good <laughs> jokes. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Eckert. You're welcome. Thank you, Sutter. Anytime. And that is it. That's Raw Talk episode number 82. Check out all the photo news over there at fronusphoto.com slash rawtalk hyphen 82 or rawtalk.com slash podcast. You can see all of the old podcasts. Please subscribe on iTunes. Remember to have your pet spader neutered. Jared Poland, fronusphoto.com. See you.